<laughs> Greetings, everyone, <laughs> and welcome to a very special May I Oil Your Shivering Spine edition of Monster Party! Monster oh, Party! Oh, <laughs> oh it's, it's hot and steamy! Oh, oh it's warm! Oh, I mean, it's warm, it's summer, it's, it's playful, it's fun. It's, hey, you know, we've been working hard, and now maybe there's a little bit of a gap in the virus, so maybe we can actually go outside and yes. look at the sun. Oh, shit, Party. we were wrong. Go back inside. <laughs> go back inside. Well, hey, speaking of hot and steamy, who are you, sir? <laughs> Agreed. I am Matt Weinhold. I'm Sean Sheridan. I'm Larry Stroth. And I'm James Gonis. And, <sighs> yes, take, take a deep breath of James Gonis. <gasps> Suck in his alluring scent. He's, he's been in the heat. Yeah, mm. You don't want to suck in this scent. Musky. <laughs> Musky. Yeah. Salty. Yeah. Mm. Okay. All right, Sweet. listeners. Well, for this topic, as my voice cracks like a teenager, <laughs> for this topic, mister... We have a topic that is, I would say, season appropriate. Yes, it is. Yes. It is concerning things that happen in the summer, vacation related, and the title of this topic is... What is this amazing topic? Monster Parties Summer Slaycation. Monster Parties Summer Slaycation. Summer Slaycation. Yeah. It's like a vacation, but it's scary. Yeah. It's summery. Ooh. It's hot. Yeah. yeah. Imagine the Go Go's like skiing behind, you know, a boat. Yes, on like a blood, river of but blood. Like blood all over them. Yes, yeah. right. <laughs> and you know, it's funny that we haven't done this one before because when you yes. think about it, there are so many summer beach vacation related horror movies. Yes, it's true. Like, mm -hmm. I mean, there are so many, and yeah. so you know, we're not going to go through every single one, but we'll talk about them. We'll reminisce. Yeah, well, maybe like, you know, like a guide, like a movie, a horror movie guide to this period, to the season. You know, precisely. And and, and and some some of these films, some people may not agree with. <laughs> well, that goes without saying. <laughs> sure. This is yeah. Monster Party. Right. But before we continue, we must introduce our fabulous guest. He is a friend of Monster Party. Oh, and we're so lucky. Yeah, so and lucky. Uh, he's been on the show a number of times. He's written lovely reviews. Not that, you know, I mean, we're not trying to oil him up or anything like that, like my <laughs> shivering spine. They were but, deserved. But, <laughs> okay. <laughs> but uh, he's a wonderful guy, and he is Monster Party royalty, in my view. He's an acclaimed writer, improviser, actor, podcaster, and raconteur. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome back Mark Hershon. Mark Hershon. Oh, always a pleasure to be with you. I listen to every episode, so I feel like I'm always part of this show. Nice. Oh. We, we feel like you're part of the show, too. Yeah. Thank you. In yeah, fact, you're like a summer vacation incarnate yourself. <laughs> 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 we, we like to think of ourselves as your summer slaycation rental. <laughs> <laughs> your your timeshare, as it were. I love it. I love yeah, it. and uh, you know, we know that you love all the same kind of stuff that we do, and that you speak our language, yes, and sir. that you like a good vacation. Sure. But sometimes bad things happen on these vacations, mm -hmm. as the movies mm -hmm. have shown us. Yes. And, oh my God! I mean, where do we start here? I mean, there's so many films that we've talked about already on this show that you could jump right to. I mean, obviously. Right. A Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Uh, oh, yeah. Almost sure. every serial killer family or the uh, Backwoods Psychos. Mm -hmm. Backwoods Psychos, almost, yeah. Almost every Backwoods Psycho movie starts with somebody on vacation. And yeah, it turns out horribly wrong. In the summer there's months. There's sweating yeah. Yeah. and there's humidity and there's right. just big <clears throat> pit stains. And, and you, can, you can see that in you the can film. Feel, you can feel, you the, feel. That, that heat and that it's oppressive. sticky humidity. Yeah. Well, I yeah. know that we've talked about Chainsaw quite a bit, but I do have to say that in that movie, heat really does play a big part. Yes, yes. 
right from the very start when you see the armadillo on oh, the yeah. highway and, and, and you, yeah and, and there's, there's the, insects there's like yeah the insects and, and when they stop at the gas station and they're getting their car washed by the creepy dude yeah and yeah. It, you can just feel the heat yeah. yes mm-hmm. and then later on in the movie and i don't want to give any spoilers although we have a million times when it comes to that movie people but, die in that film <laughs> but people do die <laughs> so i'm not gonna <laughs> yeah spoilers <laughs> It's not a rom com in any way. I, <laughs> no. Maybe if your perspective is different. Yeah, yeah. But, but uh, there's that final scene in the movie where Marilyn Burns is trapped in this house with all these psychos, and apparently when they were shooting this thing, it was like in the middle of summer, and the inside <laughs> right. of that place was like Palm Springs outdoors. It was like a 120 <laughs> degrees. So you got that heat that just barreling down on you which adds it, to the film that like sure. that comes through in the film you know and must have driven them crazy yeah. too like <laughs> yes. while yeah. filming it so it helps yes. yeah are yeah. you a fan of that film mr Hershon? uh yeah you know it's it's interesting i heard an interview with somebody from the movie i can't remember who but they were talking about filming and being in that house in summer and how sweltering it was <laughs> and they had that meal and <laughs> it was just it had been there for hours oh. and it was just <gasps> rotting and stinking oh and they had to make no. they had to make it seem like they had just been served right so wow. oh. wasn't there also a story about i think it was day of the dead yes i was had, just about to bring that up is that right okay so yeah, yeah. sean go yeah, ahead. basically i think during the shooting of day of the dead i think it was also during the summer months or very hot period and the uh, like the guts and gore that they were using in the movie, they, they had some actual real like cow intestines or something. Yeah, I think sure, yeah. that they were going to yeah. use for when they tearing apart people. Yeah, but they had to store that. They had to store them on the set in some refrigerator or something. And the next day they were going to start shooting the big scene where they tear apart Joe. What's his face? The actor and that Joe Joe Pilato. Joe Pilato. Joe Pilato. They 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 tear them apart and they you were going to use these um all these intestines, but the power had gone out the night before. Oy. And it was just like it was all rotting away, but they still had. They still it. used them, right? So, yes. they, so the poor actors who were the zombies. I think they oh. they said they put like they put like cotton in the nostrils oh. and painted oh. in black, so you can't tell. Yeah, they oh had to pretend God. to be eating it and actually oh. bring it to their mouths. Oh my and, God, and, and Sean, just it, wasn't it, it? It went out over the weekend, or was yeah, it? The next, I think you're right. Maybe I, I believe right. it was yes, a weekend right. because yes, it was right, a Larry. two day period. And, yeah, and look, yeah, listen, Greg Nicotero has told that story. Yeah, look, it, it, mm-hmm. if you're out there, if you had the power go out in your house. You know, because yeah, you know right. everyone's using the air conditioners and your fridge. Mm-hmm. You the stuff in the fridge or in the freezer, you're freaking out because it's yeah. you know. Think about that, like that old meat that you have in there to make burgers out of. You know, after a couple of days, what, like what a uh, great summer memory. Pretending <laughs> <laughs> to eat rotten intestines. You know, you know, it's interesting. I you know I've done some research on uh, writing movies about like killers and murders and stuff for stuff I was working on research and, uh, and, research. <laughs> and uh, the, the cops often say what happens is the younger rookies, they always get sick when they go into these crime scenes because of the smell. Sure. And the problem oh, is they keep yeah. running outside to get fresh air. And every time they come back in, it's like being exposed all over again. Jeez. And they say, if you just stay in there for five or 10 minutes, you get so used to it. Oh. You no longer get that feeling. I mean, you yeah. can still tell it stinks, but you don't get that you get nauseous feeling because you yeah. begin to get acclimated to it. Good you know tip. How they tell you that is a great tip. You know how they tell you when you go into a restroom or something that has like fecal smell that breathe through your mouth. And yeah. oh yeah, no, it doesn't because <laughs> no. because then you kind of taste it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's not not a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and, we've and all it been is there. summer. We it's summer. Know. So you might be going into a lot of, you know, when you go to the beach, there's always that smelly bathroom. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, yeah. No, no. It's not necessarily a bathroom. Wow. It is a porta potty or yes. an outhouse. Those are, those yeah. are just nightmares. And you go in there, there's <laughs> no flush. You're going are, in there you and you're kidding? I don't touch anything when I go in. I like use my no, elbows no. and like, right. I, use, I like, bring hot dog tongs. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> no, yeah. That's, that's what I like. I like to take a tip from Silence of the Lambs. You know, the FBI had that mentholated stuff they would put just yes. in the right. Oh yeah. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. That's yeah. good for the porta potty. Just smear a little. Uh, yeah, porta potties. 
Under Porter party is at a Renaissance fair. Not a good, not a good thing. <laughs> oh, or uh, or in uh, in Jaws when Brody's chucking the chum overboard. He's yeah. got the uh, the Old Spice on his handkerchief. Yes, that's right. Another, yeah, that's another, right. Yeah, another fine summer movie. <laughs> another, I mean, absolutely. Pro- yeah, probably the like the mother the of all summer yeah. movies. Right. Yeah, yeah. like July. Listeners will remember it, it came out, I believe, June twentieth in nineteen seventy five. Five off the top of his head and changed Don't everything. <laughs> It did, because at that time, let's face it, studios didn't really have a summer blockbuster row of films. And this kind of started it. Uh, I mean, yeah. And you know, what's funny is it it really genuinely genuinely had an impact on people's vacations because Mm. people really were afraid to go into the, into the water. Oh yeah. Yeah. I was a little, I was a little bit. Yeah. That was like, like it it kind of ruins some people's summer vacations. I think. (laughs) Sean, I remember that month or actually it was the next month when we went out to Santa Cruz, the beach and we all went out and it's like, the movie was so popular. I remember looking and no one was going in the water. Everyone's yeah. just kind of like, yeah. you know, just, yeah. just as the little waves would come up and you dab in the water. But it's like, I looked out and there wasn't anyone in the water, but Isn't it's it true. It's- these, these stories can take us from movies to movies. You're talking about now Santa Cruz, which was the setting for what? Lost, Lost Boys. Boys. Another right. Santa Cruz. Right. Right. It yes. takes place on a beach. The whole, yes. I mean, they changed and, the name of the town, but it was shot in Santa Cruz. Yes. That's right. And it's a horror film. I mean, it's horrible. No, <laughs> no, no, no. See. Right in, listeners. No, no. It's, there's there's a lot of really neat things about that film. I know. I don't think it's a bad film. I think it's just a product of its time. It's very, it's, you might not be into that style but that movie is very kind of iconic for that period and the style that it. That, that is true. Is. Yes. And it was uh, very successful. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Uh, I mean, it is time, not. I think, no, but yeah. all the things that it tries to do for me. Now, I'm only going by this. I'm a little kinder to it now because I look yeah. at it as almost it, like a high yeah. gloss Ed Wood film in my. But yeah, it's to me, it's a horror film that's that was made for people who aren't necessarily fans of horror films, too. It, Clearly. it crossed over for young Whoa. people and. And you know what I mean? But yeah, saying, it's like it's, it's not a hardcore horror film at all. But, it, but no, Joel what it is, had Joel no. Schumacher had no business directing a horror movie. Yeah, no, right. but but it, wait a minute, it's, really it's not horror. scary it's like in any manner. There's a couple yeah. scenes. There's a couple I scenes I like, and I like some. I like parts of the casting. Yeah, mm-hmm. I like I, I didn't good. mind the Lost Boys themselves. Yeah. Keeper is great. I love him in yeah, everything. They're great. cool. They're hip. You know, they're, maybe they're Matt wasn't into cool. Matt, Matt was into Matt yeah. was into hip stuff in nineteen. Look, the film they came were, out in they, were, they, were, they were what at the time is considered cool and hip for kids that yeah. I, at the time I looked at them and I'm like where are they dressing like that? <laughs> see, I thought, no, no. See, I wanted to hang with those guys because I thought they were the coolest. <laughs> of course, they weren't wearing but angel flights pants, but yeah. They might as true. well been. Yeah, yeah. I, I, and then the band, yeah. the band is terrible. There's just no, so many yeah. things about it that are just, just not fun. And then Mark, like the quarries are just a waste <laughs> of space. Okay, but that's, but, but that's their right. shtick. In Mark, movie. would you I mean, agree? Mark, would you agree though? Because Matt likes to shit all over this film. But you're you're right. It's a product of, and Sean's right. It's a product of the times. And there are some really cool elements in there. When you know they're they're tricking the guy into, hey, what am I eating? Rice. I do like that scene. And, and that yeah. and that whole I like scene, that scene is so cool. And yeah. also when you find them hanging inside that cave, that's, that's, that's cool. scary. Cool. That freaked me out. I'm Didn't sorry. they hang under a bridge or something yeah. at yeah. some yeah. point? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah I, I, I like that. Yeah, yeah, when they were tricking him to jump off the bridge into the fog, and they were all hanging. Yeah, on that's the... cool. I like yeah, that. Yeah. I, I'm a little, I'm a little heard. kinder to it now yeah. than I was as a kid because I thought I was going to see a horror movie. Yeah. I didn't know I was going to see someone's MTV video version. <laughs> yeah, that's of like but, teen and, drama. Of, and, yeah. And what TV the was big. But it was big. Ate it up at the time. Though. Yes, yeah. and and for those folks in the Midwest and the East Coast, if you've never been on the West Coast in Santa Cruz, there's this great boardwalk that's been there since yes. uh, like 1905 or something like that. Yeah, and oh, they yeah. have this beautiful wooden roller coaster, the Big Dipper, and 
They take great care of it. It's still functional today. And the funny thing is the amusement park really takes care of itself. And it's a beautiful uh, amusement park, but it's so well known here on the West Coast. So when you see all these characters <clears throat> walking around, people were flipping out here on the West Coast. Yeah. Oh, oh, that's that bridge. Oh, that's that's the Big Dipper. Oh, that's so. And so it's just really and it's it screams summer summer vacation yeah. school is out yeah. and these these <laughs> teenage... let's be vampires you no know, well <laughs> you know what though, tragic, I, I heard, though, though, school I, is out forever that's true i had heard though i had heard that in the original draft of that script i think i went through a lot of revisions because i think you know how it's lost boys it was kind of like a peter pan yes reference. right and i had heard that the original script was much different and darker and much more like like a really dark parallel to like a Peter Pan thing. Really? It, it got kind of watered down a bit or changed a bit more. That's a good idea. I, so, so I think, I think I'm real, really curious to read the original draft of the script. I think it was very different. I think I would oh, like sure. to read that too. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Sean, well, that you sounds know what, cool. You know what ruined that movie for me, aside from just watching the movie, was <laughs> Near Dark. Because yeah. well, that came yeah. out the same year, right? And Very different love. style. And that one did not get any love. No, I love and is a that's movie. true. You're right. Far that's, better film and is genuinely grim yeah. and yeah, scary. Yep. And those characters movie. scare the right. fuck out of yeah. me. Yeah. And, and, and for true. listeners, could you just fill us in near dark? What is near dark about? Well, near dark concerns this guy in his early 20s, Caleb, and he lives in this little Midwest town and he meets this girl, and the girl is kind of alluring, and she bites him and he goes home and he starts to feel all weird and the sun starts to burn him. And next thing you know, he gets picked up by this van full of these, what we find out are vampires. And they don't like the fact that she has bitten him because now they got to take on a new guy and they right, immediately right. don't like him. And they're threatening him and they're saying, let's just throw him out in the sun and kill him. And these yeah. vampires, I mean, Jesus Christ, you got Lance Hendrickson? Yes. Mm. And Bill Paxton. Uh, Bill Paxton, who may be the greatest vampire of all time. This yeah. shit kicker, <laughs> asshole scary. vampire who's yeah. so scary and threatening him all the time. Because they're, they're like these nomadic band of kind of just thugs and bullies who like know that they can't be stopped and they just go about and they just... Do whatever they, they love want. it. And they, they love it. They, they yeah. are gleeful in their in their murder and destruction, yes, which we it's rarely like, see. I mean, the yeah. Lost Boys did have that in common. They reveled yes. in yeah. being vampires. Yeah, yeah, that's and true. So do the and Jeanette Goldstein, who was so good in oh, Aliens. Yeah, yeah she's. She in the, I mean, it was it was. I mean, it was, I forget who it was. Um, Catherine. Who Catherine directed? Bigelow. Catherine Bigelow. Catherine Bigelow. Yeah. So she <laughs> took a bunch of these guys from Aliens. Yeah, yeah. Paxton right. Hendrickson. Goldstein and put them in here. And then and the kid, there's this little kid and he was in, I think he was in River's Edge too. So it's kind of like uh, Interview with a Vampire where yeah. you've got this young kid. Oh, Homer. Homer. Homer, right. Homer, right. And yeah. he is Wood Miller. Yeah. Okay. I think he's brilliant. And he is this, yeah. he's like the oldest one of the bunch. And yeah. I think they, they call him the old man. Yeah. And <laughs> so there's a part, there's a plot point in the story where you know, he wants his own young companion because now, you know, the girl has this guy who's looks like he's roughly her age. And so he wants right. somebody. So he's got his eyes on this guy's sister, Caleb's young sister. There's a scene where I just think it's so weird where they're, they're staying at a hotel and uh, the kid meets this little girl. And he's like, you want to come to my room and watch TV? And she's like, OK, I'm like, who? <laughs> Wait a minute. No one has taught you the rules of the world yet, little girl. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, you shouldn't be going anywhere with anybody. But yeah, but yeah he's so creepy. Yeah, he's good. And Tim, I just, Tom, I love that movie. Too. And, and, and so I watched that and I that had so much, it felt more genuine and it yeah. was genuinely frightening. And then I watched Lost Boys. I forget which one I saw first, but I saw Lost Boys and it was just like, Wow, nothing. And then they yeah, are play different. real fast and loose with the vampire rules, which yeah. I don't mind as long as you set it up. Right. Yeah. But, I mean, I, I yeah. loved Edward Herman in there as sort of the head of the vampires, yeah. but he's yeah, like, that, that's how I like wooing that. Diane Weist for the whole movie. Yeah. Yes. And, you know, they try to out him and they just, they can't do it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's fun. He's great in everything. Herman. He is. Yeah. Well, that's one thing I will say about both movies is that for the most part, some pretty good casts. 
Yeah. 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 I'm not crazy about the Corys. Their shtick never really did anything for me. Uh, I like, I, I much prefer Corey Feldman because I, I yeah. like more movies that he was in. Not to yeah, say that yeah. even Corey Haim was, what's the movie where uh, Corey Haim is in the football team? Lucas. Okay. Uh, I liked him in that. But when it came to the two Corys, they were always trying to make them into this comedy team, which is a disaster, especially in The Lost Boys. I, I mostly blame the writing. I just think it's bad writing. Well, I also blame... Schumacher, the the director, hundred percent. That scene with Corey Haim in the bathtub, like sudsing, like shampooing his hair and singing some stupid pop song and stuff. It's like, yeah, <laughs> dude, this had to be just for Schumacher, <laughs> right? Right. <laughs> right. Well, I don't know. I think maybe he thought, you know, the girls are going to love this. You know, uh, the yeah. teenager. I think, it's, I think the changes they made to were to do that to have to appeal to a wider audience. I think Lost Boys appeal to a wider audience than Near Dark. Your dark is is not for everybody. We love it because it's a, it's a genuine, yeah, kick ass horror film. But it's not you know you don't see a lot probably not a lot of like female audience went to that. They went to Lost Boys. The girls yes. I liked went to that one. <laughs> right, <laughs> right. But uh, Sean, you had mentioned Tim Thomerson, and I was going to oh, bring yeah. that up, bring that love. back because he's from the world of comedy that Matt and I know so well. Yes, sure. he's right. like this real fringe dweller. Of yeah. these kinds of movies, right? I mean, he's been in all sorts of stressed, strange sci-fi, yep. horror movies. And in just looking through his filmography, he was in something in 2010. I don't know. Maybe you guys saw it called Bring Me the Head of Lance Hendrickson? <laughs> I have not no, seen no. that. I've heard of I've this. I've heard of this. I have, yes. Yeah, me too. I, I think, is it a short or a feature film? That's a great question. I'm trying to see whether... I, I have heard there. of it. I mean, the log line is great. When 80s B-movie icon Tim Pomerson wakes <laughs> up one day to realize the acting roles are not coming his way anymore, he sets out on a quest to find his former co-star Lance Hendrickson to discover the secret of Hollywood longevity and gets more than he bargained for in the process. <laughs> oh, wow. And by the way, Tim Pomerson plays the dad in Near Dark. Right. Yes. Right. Right. Yes. Yeah, he's good. And for listeners who haven't been with us that long, we had Tim Thomerson on our show. That's Lovely right. wow. awesome. We did. Awesome. What a career. Yeah. Fun. If we're gonna, if we can do the kind of segue thing, you're talking about the the boardwalk. Made me think of the boardwalk that they used for us, which was oh like, yeah, yes. yeah. boardwalk. That was it's, the yeah. boardwalk. it's the yeah. same boardwalk. It's the same boardwalk. Oh and yeah, it, interesting. Okay. And in so, way, you know, I really wanted to like that more than I did. I well, liked it, it. It took this weird humor turn that kept kind of pulling me out of. The it's, horror of the movie. I enjoyed odd. both parts of it. Yeah, but it's for some odd, reason it wasn't meshing that well for me. The ending is ridiculous and unsatisfying. The reason for what's going on and the fact that you have these people that are kept in this area—I don't want to give too much away if you haven't seen it—but there's an explanation of what's happening that is just absurd. Just from it's, a sheer it's administration a, it's a point jumble. of view, yeah, it's, it's like it's a more who, of a fantasy. who changes the beds in that place, you know? Or, <laughs> Wait, like, Sean, what, Sean? Would you say it's like an extended Twilight Zone episode? Kind of, yeah. Like I mean, if it were, there's a it big, was, there's this level of disbelief you have to. I mean, it's more to me. It's more a big fan, level of disbelief. Yeah, but it's more fantasy horror to me. If you look at it that way, then I go with it. Mm. I think it's an intriguing idea, and it's more to me. It's more if you start to look at it in a real reality logic way then no yes. it doesn't work at all yes but i would i would say the oh, well. same but the same thing with get out get out everybody loves but no, when, that's... When, but when yes but i'm talking about the sci-fi element of it is ridiculous wait yeah. wait, wait, wait ridiculous. a minute what part what part is that you transplanting your brain into something hey, like it's, hey they did it's, it in frankenstein in 1931 larry, larry. Surely, yes yeah, larry i love the movie <laughs> i'm just saying that that People didn't mind, but the weird fantasy logic of us, a lot of people had problems with. I right. didn't. You have it's a the, point. You have a point. And you're existing in the same universe, and that's Peel's way of doing it. When I think about Get Out, the idea, as Larry was saying, that we've grown up with the idea of transplanting a personality or a brain into someone. We've seen a million movies like that. So that seems like something that I would buy within the context of the story, as opposed sure. to us which the logic part of it fell apart for me. Although I will say that once again, I did love the direction. I did love yeah. the, the performances, performances were good. I are incredible. It was, there and there's some, there's some great creepy stuff in yep. it. Yeah, yeah. Incl including the main twist of the mother character. 
I yeah, thought, yeah. Was, yeah. Was, was great. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I want to like it more idea. than I do, but I don't. Yeah. Okay. I I did like it, and Mark, you know, it's funny. You mentioned the the comedy. I didn't I didn't get the comedy. I to me to me it was just totally <laughs> surprise. No, what I'm just saying shock. it was scary <laughs> to me. It was scary and creepy through the whole thing. And like Sean, you know, I had a I had a couple of drinks, and I was like trying to be loose and <laughs> trying to just let it flow over me. And sure. I really I did enjoy it. I did. Yeah, I, inter- I, I'm always I wasn't being is- Mr. Logical, Mr. Hey, uh, let me watch this. Yeah, I, I oftentimes will will laugh at these movies because of the the humor that's in them. And if I'm watching them with my wife, she she'll look at me and go, "What are you laughing at?" I, go, well, <laughs> right. I don't have time to backtrack and tell you why this is funny right now. Right, but I'll right. tell you if. After it's over, I'll right, explain right. why. Do you, do you say it like that as nicely as that? I do. <laughs> we That's could all good. learn a lesson from you, sir. Yes, we could. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, we had just mentioned, of course, Jaws. And of, of course, the sequel to Jaws had the famous, really genius tagline, which was uh, just when you thought it was safe to go back into the water. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> but there's another very summer like movie that came out that even built upon that tagline. <laughs> And I've mentioned this movie before, but it's perfect for this topic. And that was from 1980, Blood Beach. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Blood right. Beach. Yeah. Saw, it, I saw it in the theater. Blood yeah, me Beach. Too. Yes. Uh, yep. Blood Beach is a fun movie that has a, a genius. Is it? Tag- I, I like it. I think it's really fun. And the, uh, the tagline for that movie was a parody of the Jaws 2 tagline, which was, just when you thought it was safe to go back into the water, you can't get to it. <laughs> That's good. Because, because like in that. the movie, there is yeah. these people are being sucked under the sand on the beach from, by some kind of strange, mysterious creatures. Yes. And it's uh, you got Mariana Hill is, is in it, and John Saxon and Burt Young are the cops well, trying to go. figure out what's oh, going there on. Go. They're really fun. And it turns out to be this like bizarre, like giant Venus flytrap creature. It's like a fleshy it's Venus flytrap, isn't it? The, it's, yeah, it's like spoiler the alert. Pier. Yeah, I it saw is, this is a spoiler. I saw, it des- <laughs> I saw it described as an artichoke like sandworm. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> that. Yeah. <laughs> you don't you don't see it much until the end of the movie. Right. You don't see it. Right. But, but to but me, I haven't seen it since the theater, so yeah. maybe that's one I should. But I, I will say this for listeners: if you're not familiar with this, I mean, Sean's right. We did talk about it a while back. Yeah. But if you go to YouTube and type in Blood Beach trailer, the trailer yeah. to me freaked me out because yeah. the last shot, it's the girl who's like half into the the right. the sand, down. and the yeah. way she's being moved up and down up and down it's she's almost like dead like <laughs> yeah. uh, uh, it was too yeah it it's actually pretty pretty me. pretty genius economically too, to make a horror film where yeah you that's people true. being sucked that's into true. the sand and don't show the monster till the very end um, james, james but, did you like that did you like that film i i have to say i i have never seen it but i have mentioned it on the show before because the oh. writer the writer director was a man named jeffrey bloom he gave me a lot of support i had done a spec script a vampire story, actually, and he was very supportive about it. He didn't he didn't produce it, but he looked into maybe that's it. because you didn't see Blood Beach. <laughs> I, I, <laughs> when when he asked me, I should have said, "Damn it, that's my favorite movie." That's right. yeah, no matter what. <laughs> yeah, and that's when you start saying things like, "I love scene three. <laughs> I love that scene where that thing happened. The uh, there is a great scene in Blood Beach that's pretty fun. I absolutely don't want to spoil it, but okay. I think you yeah. know what I'm talking about, Sean, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. okay. It's fun. Right. Yeah, it's, uh, yeah, it's fun. Check that one out. For, for a good summer film, check that out. How about, All right. a, how about a summer movie that's only a summer movie through a technicality? <laughs> Ooh, okay. Okay. Go for it. Okay. Buffy the Vampire Slayer. That was summer? The original. Oh, yeah. It was sure. not summer, but her name was Buffy Summers. Okay, now oh, we're okay. you said it was a technicality. Oh, okay. Well, it kind of feels like a, a summer movie, though. Yeah. It actually took place during the school year, so it was See, not summer. Right. Oh, Mark, wow. So it Mark, really I doesn't expect, belong. In I, I would topic. expect this from James, not from <laughs> <laughs> You feel my pain. <laughs> What's that oh. summer dolphin movie, James? <laughs> <laughs> I think you're referring to Blackfish. That's correct. But, oh, but, but okay, okay, okay. So here's a film that came out in the summer. Okay. And there are some elements in this film that are hot, hot, okay. steamy, and Yum. and uh, humid. Hat on. 
No, 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 this is adventure. This is excitement. This is a little bit of supernatural. And I'm talking about the film that was released on June 12th, 1981, Raiders of the Lost Ark. Now, you guys are going, whoa, whoa. Well, at the beginning, you're in this, like this, it's not the Amazon, but it's like this hot and humid place where it's not winter. Certainly. No, it is not yeah. winter, but it's it's a hot and humid place. And he goes into this tripped out place to, to try and find this little idol. But actually throughout the whole movie, when he's sent on this journey to go find the Lost Ark, that whole place is hot and steamy, dry, yes. yes, arid. Yes, and, and this film, you know, blew everyone uh, out of the water. As a matter of fact, the funny thing is I remember seeing the poster and to me it looked like – Harrison Ford is wearing a cowboy hat. I yeah. don't want to see him in a cowboy movie. I and agree with you, Larry. I, I, and I didn't want to see it until yeah. I, my friend Joey, his parents came home, and they knew I loved monsters. They knew I loved adventure. They came in. You know, I got to spend the night at Joey's house, and the parents came in. They go, Larry, you have got to see this film. And I go, why? Isn't it about cowboys? And they didn't want to say anything. They go, you just have to see it. So – Joey and I, the next day, we went to see it. I was kind of reluctantly. And from the very beginning, I was blown away. That film stayed playing in San Jose at the, at the Century Theaters for over a year. <clears throat> yeah. Listeners may not remember, because now in our day and age where we have uh, live streaming and stuff like that, back then, if a film was popular, you know, the, the distributor or the, the movie theater chain would hold on to a film if, if people kept right. coming back to see it. They did this with Star Wars and E.T. And, but when Raiders of the Lost Ark, I remember there was a poster that said, congratulations on one year and still going, you know. Wow. So yeah. it was very exciting. But, but the feeling of it's, it's hot and it's, it's humid yes. and there's fire. And- Plus, it's just a perfect summer escapist oh, movie. You know yeah. what I mean? It really One is of the greatest action movie. films of all time. Yeah. 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 Back, again, I think we've talked about it before but it's back then when you were a kid and you knew like a big kind of fantasy horror or sci-fi movie was coming out and you were never disappointed in a way there was a slip a run of films for a while that was like they were mostly like, good like, yeah like life cannot be better there's no not a dud in the bunch and like right. not, not just not a dud but like perfect movies you know and star wars years, superman yeah. raiders of lost ark like you just kept coming and coming was, oh my right, god right you know it's like yeah it was a magical time how many years oh. after you saw that movie any of you did you remember your surprise at discovering Alfred Molino was the guy who was the guy who created <laughs> the whip for the idol? Yes. Just a couple, couple of years That's ago. Right. Yes. Yeah. Wow. Yes. And he's had quite a career. That yeah. was his, oh, yeah. that Does, was his doesn't first. he play Doc Ock in, uh, yeah, in Spider-Man? That was, that was, was his first. Throw me the whip. I right. throw you the idol. He, he also is, he's, he's in the movie uh, Frida. He plays the, the artist. He's so right. good yeah, in that film. Chocolate. He plays the mayor. Yeah, yeah I, I cosplay that uh, character, the chocolate <laughs> <laughs> mayor. Yeah, just I, I mean, you go to you know, you walk down uh, Comic Con, you just wait for someone. Come on! But you know, it, what, what's kind of cool is, it, like Sean said, this is such a great summer movie, and it, it's kind of timely because it set off a, a series of Indiana Jones type films, and and now which we're all we, disappointing. Yeah, well, Lassiter, yeah. which and which I'm sure that the final insult will be the new one coming out. Well, sure. yeah. you, you know, I'm hopeful. Come on, come I'm hopeful. Nah. I'm, I'm, no, no. It's gonna be. It's awful. gonna blow. It's gonna. It's gonna be like Sean, you're gonna watch it. And it's you're gonna, gonna blow. You're gonna, you're gonna have like a couple of instances of like, oh, this is almost capturing that magic. Larry, do you really think it's going to be anywhere near good? Well, you starting to sound like Matt. I expect that from Matt. Not <laughs> you. You know what it is, Larry. This Lucas. is not 1980s. It's 2021. I every time, it. hey, look. Every time you're going to hear the crack of that whip, you're going to think it's his knees. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But but, you know, but they may is, play up on that. Yes, all James. these all these Indiana Jones sequels are Lucy and the football. You go in hoping. Yes, now this yes, time true. maybe exactly. never yes. never exactly. Like, you always frustrated. end up laying on your ass just yeah, yeah. and in pain. You see, he's already he's gotten injured on the set of this one already. <laughs> really? <laughs> of course. Right. Well, well, another hey, another, yeah. another airplane go over his uh, leg he's, again. Got, yeah. Mark, he's like seventy eight years old. Cut him some slack. He, okay. he, he broke a tooth on cream corn. Apparently, That's why he should be doing playing Indiana Jones. Apparently, they use the de aging process on him, the digital uh, thing. Because uh, are you kidding me? 
No. There, are oh, shot, no. there are shots from the set of him with dots all over his face. They've changed <gasps> the tech. The technology's gotten so good. Well, you literally just put makeup dots on his you face. You know what, though? You know what, though? I, I bet you that's like a flashback. I yes. bet you it's a flashback. Yeah. Probably. Yeah. yeah. I mean, but I mean, will I nah. see it? Yeah, maybe when it's when it's free on HBO sure. Max right. or something. But oh, I'm not I'm not gonna run Come out to on, see that. Sean. No. No, I'll just Sean. see it. You, it's still gonna have the Larry, big screen effect. Larry, it's yeah, yeah, but it's gonna be all CGI and it's gonna ugh. Yeah, I'm not, 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 well, not I'm not there. I don't know. Just watch I, the original over and over and you won't be disappointed. Well, the, the original is great. Yeah. Wonderful and a very hot summer movie. Yeah. <laughs> so, hey, Mark Hershon. Yes. Here's a movie that I heard you didn't like and I really loved, which is a summer movie. And that's Tucker and Dale versus Evil. Oh, yeah. You heard I didn't oh, like that? I, still I thought it. I heard that you didn't like that. I thought you said that you didn't like this. Am I wrong? I enjoyed most of it. First of all, I'm a huge fan of both the leads, Tyler Labine and Alan Tudyk. Yeah. And I thought their stuff was great. I, I just didn't care for the college students all that much. To me, they, was all, they were almost too caricature-y. But that's the point, though, right? I know it was the point. It's not just I would have liked it better if it was straighter because the two guys are so funny that they have to play against now these five college students that are wacky. I felt was just too much. It was like pushing too much of it through. But overall, overall, I enjoyed the movie. I thought it was okay. a really okay. great spoof. Matt, what's yeah. the premise again of that? The, the premise is Tucker and Dale, these two lovable kind of hillbilly guys, they bought a summer cabin. <laughs> and they're going to go and they're going to fix it up. Fix and it this up. is their place where they're going to vacation and they're going to drink beers and they're going to fish. And it's going to be wonderful. Well, on their way up to this place, they bump into a bunch of college kids at this truck stop. Mm-hmm. And somehow through a series of events that I don't want to share, these kids get it into their minds that these guys are these backwoods, uh, backwoods horrible serial killer types. Like very the, Texas the, Chainsaw Texas. Massacre. Exactly. Right. Yeah. Exactly. And so they think that. And then through the movie, even more things happen to reinforce this idea. Yeah. And I just think it's clever. I think it's great. As you were saying, the performances of Labine and Tudyk are brilliant. And what I really love is the romance in the movie. Mm-hmm. Larry, you'd be surprised. There's a really beautiful I, romance. I'm I'm trying to hold on to my... <laughs> tongue here because it's like matt romance really it's you, super, you hate that it's really endearing it's very sweet it's and very, very sweet, sweet. yeah and um and i just think the movie is very satisfying i like the way it ends uh i know that there was talk of them doing a sequel really. but it <clears throat> never really you know came to pass so yeah this the whole movie is these kids thinking that these two are serial killers and through that, they end up accidentally killing themselves off. Yes. Right. <laughs> and it's great. It's so funny. And um, yeah, if you haven't seen it, it's, I, I think it's a, it's a new classic. Um, did you ever see Tyler Labine? He was in a TV series where he was like the second banana. I'm trying to find the title of it here. Oh, it's called Reaper. I don't know this one. No. It's, mm. it's called Reaper. It was on for a couple of three seasons. And uh, it was the main character was the illegitimate son of the devil. (laughs) That sounds good. And the devil was played by Ray Wise. Oh, Oh, my God. That's perfect. Wow. And Tyler Labine played the main character's best friend. And he is the first time I saw him. And he is consistently funny in every scene he's in. Wow. Wow. I'll find this. This sounds great. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It, yeah. And I love Ray Wise. It's yeah, of course. Great and everything. Well, the whole thing was it was a really well put together show. I was very disappointed it only lasted the three seasons, but it was it was very clever. Although three seasons these days. Yeah. I know that's these days. Three episodes yeah. is a, definitely, it's definitely great now. I was just going to talk about sort of an unexpected kind of movie, just because when I when I was looking things up, I go, oh, I forgot entirely that not only was this movie a summer movie. But it was it was really kind of purported as like a horror type movie was the Burbs. Oh yeah, <laughs> oh. true, true. Right? Yeah, I mean the logline for it is that you know this this put upon suburbanite thinks that neighbors are part of a satanic cult. Yeah, um, yeah. This was uh, Joe Dante. 
Joe Dante and Tom Hanks and John Candy. Uh, uh, Bruce Dern. Bruce Dern. <laughs> yeah, it was a great cast. <laughs> yeah. And super funny. I mean, it, it had a certain play to it. And then it kind of just, it never had any legs. Yeah, like, like I, I remember liking it at the time, but not loving it. I mean, it, yeah. I mean, I did that'd be one to revisit now because it's been a long time. It didn't have like the biggest more. impression yeah. on me, but it was it was very much in that Spielbergy '80s kind of like, uh, yeah. I mean, it's one I should probably should look at again. But um, yeah, I did like the premise and the cast. Yeah, yeah. yeah. it also has a reputation for coming out during this big writer strike when nothing else was coming out, and oh, right. apparently yeah. a lot of it was like improvised because of that. Oh, really? Oh, I forgot oh, about that. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, I think so. Hey, Larry, you got one? Well, you know, I, I wanted to mention something because we, we just kind of brushed over Jaws. I mean, Jaws was so such a, a big, huge film that started that whole summer movie craze. Has anyone tried one of these events where someone will screen Jaws on a big screen and you're in a pool? Or you're on like an inner tube, <laughs> yes, or have you yes. guys done it? Like, there's I've, I've um, heard of that. I've never really? gone to one, but in Lake, I, like yeah. in Lake Travis, Texas, that's they have funny. a thing where they, oh my God, Sean, think about it. You're you're actually floating on a tube, you know, and you're watching the movie on a giant that's screen. A great idea. And at the very beginning, when the girl is getting, you know, pulled up and down, I mean, you start to. Oh, uh, uh, you, you know, and all it takes is for one clown to go underneath you and just yeah, you know, yeah, grab right. your That's foot funny. and you freak out. But you know, they're that really should be part of it. Yeah, yeah. You should have yeah. people underwater yeah. in scuba gear yeah. to do all this stuff <laughs> as you're watching the movie. <laughs> yeah. That's great. Or how about just wear a little fin? You know, a little fin, yeah, and so, yeah. uh, like a That's like funny. a shark fin. I always but wanted one of those fins. But but you know, yeah. I, I wanted to ask. Any listeners out there, have you gone through this experience? Could you tell us about it? Because this is something that I've I've really wanted to try. I, anything yeah, really. where you can have in like enhance your movie experience, I'd love to do yeah, something like idea. that. It's like like if if you can watch Star Wars in outer space, you know, yeah. or or like the Towering Inferno with like fire under you. <laughs> <laughs> well, I wouldn't go that yeah. far, sure. But, or like or how about or, how about the movie Tentacles? It's on my list. It's and, on my and, list. and you fill the pool with calamari. <laughs> yeah. oh. Tentacles is a great one because it's such a, it's a shameless, it's an Italian 1977, uh, shameless Jaws or Boff just with a giant octopus, ridiculous, bizarre cast. It's Johnny Houston, Shelley Winters, like, um, and then like Italian actors and it's uh it's unbelievable cast yeah henry, it's henry actually fun though right yeah oh yeah henry fonda yeah henry, henry fonda, fonda is in tentacles academy oh, award God winning sake. actor wow. my goodness. yeah that's it's a fun it's fun though but uh, see I, I missed that one but yes yeah you know, i mean i mean all you know of course he Joe plays fonda. mr whitehead <laughs> <laughs> hey he, he was also in the swarm so you know he was kind of slumming around that time hey you gotta work <laughs> Yeah, right. Sean, just, Sean, would you put Piranha in the same category? Of course, of course. Yeah, sure. on my list yeah. too. That's a that's but, a great summer film. But that's the, the one. That's a Jaws. I, I wouldn't even say. I mean, it's it, it can be Jaws categorized very, as a Jaws ripoff, but it's actually a very clever, well made movie. Yeah, by Joe Dante, Jaws written variant. by John Sayles. Yeah, John Sayles. Yeah, yeah. It's a little more to it. It's because it's like genetically enhanced Piranha. You know, in Festus Lake, and you got Kevin McCarthy's in it. It's great and uh, great film. Really fun. And then years later, they did that Piranha 3D movie. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, which I saw in the theater. I and, had not seen that. And I really enjoyed it. Is it good? Yeah. And there's a there's a nice little Jaws nod when it comes to some stunt casting. Toward oh, movie. okay. I think it's oh, toward I've, the end I've of the film. Oh, I've heard this. I've heard yeah. of this, yeah. And that was really pleasing. But the 3D was great. The effects are really gory. Oh, okay. And yeah. we... Carrie and I went with some friends of ours and uh, one of the friends who is not really used to horror films. <laughs> there's a scene where one of the piranha like grabs a hold of someone's body and just like tears all the skin off the body. So it's just like this <laughs> pulpy, muscly, bloody frame left. Right. And she started crying. <laughs> and, I, oh. and, I, and I, and I was, <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, no hey, this is good filmmaking. Matt, how, no, how could you take to her that. to see that? How could you take her to well, see I that? No, I, I didn't know that no one told her that this wasn't real. You should have took her to see Lost Boys. 
<laughs> yeah. he, he probably would have cried too. Yeah, yeah. yeah, for the for the for another reason. <laughs> oh, well, uh, Jaws was so Jaws, Jaws was so hot. It was uh, that Peter Benchley himself was a franchise for a couple of years. True, true, so, true. Two years later, the Deep comes out. <gasps> oh, uh, oh, I love the Deep. With, I yeah. did well, too. Yeah, you know, um, I. I the only thing I remembered about it was Jacqueline Bissett in the yeah. time, you know. Is it a Bissett? You need Bissette? more? Bissett. <laughs> yeah. And a, a, a fun John Barry score, which yeah. uh, I, it was my second John Barry soundtrack after King Kong, and it had blue vinyl, which they weren't doing at the time. So that was really wow. Cool. It came with a little poster. Uh, and whenever I go snorkeling, I still hear the music in my head. <laughs> yeah, that, mo- that movie, uh, that movie when I first saw, of course, they promoted it the wrong way. They promoted it like Jaws, which is yes. like yeah. Jaws. There's like one scene where there's like a manta ray. Right? Right? Sean, yeah. 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 And they, I they, expected they, a shark. They, yeah, they I put that a in shark the trailer. They put that in Jacqueline Bissett's <laughs> t-shirt wet t-shirt in the trailer but it's not it's not jaws but it's a, but it's a good movie though and robert shaw plays a different character yes you know, yeah, the, it's, and it's, what's it's weird like is like a caper or a mystery film yes well yeah. with treasure yeah I mean, it's good I, yeah. I would say to listeners it may not necessarily be quite a horror film but it it's is not. a it's action not. adventure thriller but yeah. it is a good right. it is a good film and and good summer jack movie. jack yeah. Bissett is worth the Boy, price of admission who? And for those manly men out there, because Mark, I know you're like this. <laughs> oh, there's yeah. a sequence. There's a sequence where you have these two brawny bodyguards who don't like each other, and they have this fight, oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. and they don't say a freaking word, yeah. and it's just brute strength. Do you guys remember the sequence? Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. it's it's intense, and it's to me that was it was horrifying because which one of these guys is going to win? And because they, they're both really tough and really masculine. It's, it's a manly, manly. Okay. All right. right. No, I'm just, okay. I'm just saying. I'm and just from saying. A, it's a hot from summer. A, no. from, a, from a filmmaking <laughs> no. perspective, you know they were just extras being paid for a silent bit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. No. Lines. My they question no is, lines. were they wearing angel flights? <laughs> they were not. Okay. They were not. Do, do you got, come on. Do you remember the sequence? Yes, yeah. I do. I, I hey, I'm a big, I'm a fan of the movie. I think yeah. I think the underwater stuff in that photography film, is great. Brilliant. Yeah. I, yeah. It yeah. is. It's beautifully shot. It's true. And, and I, I really like enjoyed the whole right? movie. I saw but it a number of times. Actually, but then but then the island in 1980. Okay, <laughs> yeah. With my, yeah. Now, that one I don't remember. The well, island remember. is. You know, I, I enjoy the movie now, but the island is ridiculous. What yeah. is the, what is yeah. the island? How do you? What is that? Well, yeah. Mike, Michael Caine plays an investigative reporter who goes down to Michael Florida. Michael this, this was back when the Bermuda Triangle was still like this big mystery. Like, why are people disappearing? It's not but, still? <laughs> well, <laughs> In Search of has been off the air for so long, I forgot about it. <laughs> so he and his son go down to Florida, and then they take a boat into this area where there's all these uncharted islands. And in one of them, well, there's a colony of pirates. <laughs> That, that are led by David like Warner, and they've modern been day existing. Pirates. Modern day pirates have been existing, unknown for hundreds of years, uh, <laughs> d- pillaging, pillaging vacationers' boats and killing right. vacationers for years. And for years, uh, unnoticed, right? Where do they right. spend the money? They they take the booty and they live on it. They live yeah. on the food. They, they, it could happen. Clothes, you know? It could happen. I'm just, I'm just asking questions. That's all. Come on. Come I just on. like they, the fact David Warner is in it. I love David Warner. Oh yeah, the, the, yeah. The it's fun. Is, it's, yeah. The yeah. problem is David Warner is more charismatic than Michael Caine <laughs> so, or any of the other characters. You're, you're, no. sort of, you're sort of rooting for the pirates after yeah. a while. Yeah. Well, it's just it's a very it's a very unbelievable movie like everything is very over the top and histrionic and it's just kind of yeah. like the idea is kind of intriguing but i guess they're going for like a pulp adventure but it's it's mm. crazy. and the thing is now now it's more forgivable when it came yes. out it was a mega bomb because yes. it was expensive yes. it was xanic yeah. brown producing it right and oh yeah effectively was this effectively, before or after beyond the valley of the dolls was it before <laughs> or after jaws 3d <laughs> It was after Beyond the Valley of the Dolls and before Wait. Jaws, Jaws before 3D, 3D, but, yeah. <clears throat> but Benchley at that point was not the uh, <laughs> the brand the that, that they thought he was. That would have worked better time. as a as a straight out horror film, I think. Well, yeah, well maybe. It, it, they tried to make it a horror film. Yeah, yeah there's some gory, it. violent stuff in it. There's a lot of yeah. My, Michael Ritchie, <clears throat> most of the films he had made up to that point were very good films. The Candidate, Bad News Bears, Smile. Yeah. He's a good yeah. director. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, Downhill Racer. But, 
It just yeah, kind of like went off. It went off the rails. It's just. It's just kind of. And then eventually, like, didn't they do a bunch of miniseries called like the like the Beast and Creature? Yeah. Like a bunch, they're, they're all Jaws, basically. It's like they're all just but, like redoing Jaws. But but with the island, he jumped his own shark. At that. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> oh, oh, nice. Nicely done. Oh, yeah, that was class. Oh, bravo, Smooth. Maestro. Now I know why you got around. That was <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, you know. I think someone told me about that film when I was that age, because, you know, you were, we were all talking about the Bermuda Triangle. Right. And then someone said, oh, well, it's a bunch of pirates. And, and that was it for me, because if it's the Bermuda Triangle, I want aliens. Yeah, yeah right. Yeah. It's got to be aliens. It can't be pirates. What? No. <laughs> yeah. 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 But the ending is kind of fun because Michael Caine gets to go uh, Sam Peck and Pa with a machine gun. <laughs> it's, yeah. it's, it's pretty and, violent. I think yeah. I do want to yeah. watch it. Might it. Be, it's, now it's probably you can probably enjoy it more as like a camp experience. Okay. Yes. It's yeah. not yeah. really, it's not, it's not as bad as they say. We got one yeah. star in the New York Daily News. Like, can it be that bad? It wasn't that yeah, bad. Yeah. I think it's, the, it's that classic, you know, trying to ride on the popularity of previous right. stuff and like let him right. do anything you want with a Benchley property. How can you go wrong? Well, and you know, right. James, yeah. I, I think it's important to note too, that when you first said it, my first thought was the Island from 2005, which is actually no. a retelling of oh, yeah. another yeah. movie. But so, right. so your, your film, the Island with Michael Caine, when did that come out? 1980, 1980. Okay. And then yeah. another film called the Island, which came out in 2005. Yeah, it's it's not what we're talking. Yes, exactly. Movie, yeah. yeah. Right. Hey, there's a movie that I don't think we've ever talked about, but I enjoyed it and it's 2009 and it's called a perfect getaway. Hmm. And I'm not, sh- getaway. I'm not sure if it ever came out in the theater, mm-hmm. but it was one mm-hmm. of those things where, you know, it was like when the blockbusters were going out of business Yes, they had all their DVDs, and you could buy, you know, mm-hmm. ten for ten dollars. Yes, and so yeah. anything that we saw there that looked remotely interesting, we just grabbed. Right, and uh, so we saw this movie, and it's uh, stars Timothy Oliphant, Mila Jojovich, and Steve Zahn. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. it's pretty good. So the story is vacationing in Hawaii is Cliff, who's Steve Zahn, and Sydney, who's Mila Jojovich. And they're driving to a hiking trail when they have a weird run-in with the hitchhiking couple that Cliff doesn't want to give a ride to. Mm-hmm. So they later run into Nick and Gina. And this is a couple played by Timothy Oliphant and Kylie Sanchez. And so after meeting Nick and Gina, the four of them find out that a honeymoon couple had recently been murdered by a strange man and woman. Hmm. And so the four of them decide they're going to team up because, you know, there's strength in numbers. Yeah. And so what follows is really great. There's lots of mind games of who might be the bad guy, right. you know, and a lot of character tension. And I think a really fun twist. Hmm. And I can't say any more. Okay. But okay. I love Steve Zahn. I love I, hmm. Timothy Oliphant. I like him in everything. Yeah. And it's a nice character piece because everybody is really good at making you wonder who's the good guy, who's the bad guy, what's really going on here, it's and funny, uh, a satisfying ending. I remember that the trailer vividly. I don't think I ever saw the film, but I it's remember really, it's, seeing the trailer it, in movie theater. Yeah, it's super fun. Cool. Okay. So this is from 2009. 2009, yeah. And it's and the director was David, was it Twahi? Twohi? Twohi. Oh, yeah. yeah, he's done some... Um, he did not direct the Twonky. No. Um, <laughs> he did the Chronicles of Riddick series. That's right, he did... Oh, um, he, did, he, wrote the yeah, first, he, he wrote the first one. Yeah, okay. he, he, he wrote The Fugitive, I think, the movie, and he mm. uh, did the movie Pitch Black, yeah. uh, uh-huh. a sci-fi yes. movie with... Yeah, so yeah, he's, uh, he's done some interesting stuff. I like this better than Pitch Black. I enjoyed Pitch Black, but I do too. Yeah, it's not yeah, not exactly a summer movie, but yeah, no. But, but I like that. I like the concept. Of. <laughs> yeah, but I think you guys, if you haven't seen this, I think you'll really enjoy it. I like Critters too. Cool. Did you like Critters too? We wrote that. I did enjoy yeah, Critters too. Actually, I enjoy all the Critters films. There you go. I have to say, I do as well. Yeah, although I, the first uh, one is the best. I I prefer having a lot of Critters in my home. <laughs> yeah, <that's true. laughs> have yeah. you seen Critters, Larry? Uh, loads of times. 
Oh, but okay. The critter, the critter that I'd really like to have in my house is also the big star of a big film a big summer film that I've talked about all kinds of times but <laughs> it fits in this category because I remember it so vividly as a kid. And of course I'm talking about you, you want to watch a good old classic summer film. Why not watch from 1954 creature from the black lagoon, because sure, it takes place summer. in the Amazon and it's hot and steamy and you've got this great lagoon and beautiful underwater stuff. But I remember when I saw that Mark, I, I remember practicing swimming like the creature. If you remember the creature, like Julianne. Swims- <laughs> no, no, well, not like Julie Adams, but like the creature, you know, the creature. So you can catch up to Julie Adams. Well, yes. <clears throat> well, I mean, as a kid, I was thinking I'm the creature and I would try to swim. The funny thing is Riku Browning, who played the underwater creature, was like a professional swimmer. Oh. Originally, he was brought in to do some test shots and they really liked how he swam. And he yeah. did this swim stroke mm. that was kind of unique. It wasn't really your standard breaststroke, you know, where the arms go over. It was more like an under thing where your yeah. hands or like if you had webbed hands, you go like this and you could yeah. push the water behind you. And so I remember when I saw that film, there were times when we would go to the, the free swim pool, you know, at the, at the local uh, YMCA and, and yes. I would try to pla- practice swimming like the creature. <laughs> Did you guys yeah. do that? Yeah, yeah. in fact. Yeah. It, well, no, I did. And I, I think I've told you this before, Larry, but when I went to Universal Studios, I got that creature mask, yes. which I, I, you could probably tell me, I, I forget which series it is, but it was a, a kind of a flimsy one, but it yeah. was cool. And yeah. I, I remember going in the pool with that thing. <laughs> And uh, that's not a good idea. Yeah, <laughs> that's yeah. like, hey, you know, Larry, Larry, how, how I do I kill myself in the <laughs> yeah. most efficient, quick way? I did love swimming as a kid and still do, but I didn't mimic the creature swing. But I did. I remember trying to mimic the swimming style of the man from Atlantis. Do you remember oh, that? Yes, yeah. Mark oh, Duffy. Oh, my God. Uh, from the 70s. And yes. the, idea, the way he swam was it like he was, it was underwater, completely underwater. And he would just like undulate his whole body yes, yeah it was I would, really I cool tried, but he was like I really tried. swimming it was like a really unique yeah that was cool. way to swim and i kind of like that that show was, was really bizarre and got really ridiculous after a while but it was kind of fun yes but there's it was so cool there's something yeah, fascinating that was like there's something fascinating about getting those small touches right you guys have had doug yes. jones on the show yeah, sure. yeah. Oh, yeah. and his yes. character on star trek has that weird walk that he does where his arms yeah. are kind of behind him Yes. Mm-hmm. Well, he's like a master of just like. Yeah, no, he's he's a genius. Um, he's yeah, the best part of that show. Yeah. And it's just, it's amazing how just those small touches go, wow, that is so alien. Right. It sticks with you. <laughs> right. And also thing, when yeah. you think, when you think about the creature too, as Larry was saying, it's a very unique style of swimming and it's right. very iconic. It's very memorable. Yes. yes. And yeah. if you think about if the creature swam any other way, it could have ruined the whole thing. Like yeah. if he was dog paddling, Matt, you know, I like, totally the, agree. Like the breaststroke or something. Totally yeah. agree. I mean, You're it's right. like all the pieces came together for that yeah, film. Yeah, that's true. And, true. and I would include, if we're talking summer movies, the whole trilogy. Yes. Yes. So, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. In the park, the water park, you know. Yes. Sequel, yeah. mm-hmm. The same one, Revenge summery. of the Creature. Yeah. Sure. yeah. I mean, people would typically go to Sea World or yeah. you know Aquarium mm-hmm. Land, and yeah. and yeah, you would see the dolphins or the whale. Well, maybe not the whales now. It's not really right. PC. Thank you, James Blackfish. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but but well, yeah, Sean, you're true. absolutely right. And then the third one. <clears throat> experiment you know the funny thing is we've had this discussion and you know sean actually gave me a better a new appreciation for the third one um yeah i love it. the creature walks among us which is you know it's it, they're all kind of sad and tragic but it's really sad with the yeah. last one yes. and yeah. and and sean had mentioned how there's a sequence where you know that poor creature he's in this cage has he, he's now he's breathing air and stuff and he's looking and there's the yeah, ocean yeah. or water yeah. right how, there how cruel is it to have their mm. lab and have his I cage know. right now <laughs> Terrible, terrible. view terrible. of the ocean That's yeah. it's like i know yeah i know it's yeah those are good certain ones um here's one though that i think I, you guys all should know it's a great movie that i don't know if we talked about much but this is from 1972 this movie takes place during the summer of 1935 the other oh, oh, yes. oh the other is a true. great great horror film that still many people think was a TV movie that aired on television. And it's of course aired on television after it's theatrical release because it kind of feels like a 70s TV movie, but it's great. It's really creepy. It's and very it's, creepy. Yeah. It's and an it's, underrated film. 
Yes. Um, and it involves these two twin brothers, Holland mm. and Niles. And they kind of live in this rural oh. kind of farmhouse. And Niles has learned this trick. He learns how to do kind of astral projection in a way. He can he can go inside other... Yeah, he can put his mind into mind. a bird's yeah. mind. Yeah. Like, and experience and, what the bird is experiencing. Yeah, they oh. call it the great game. And um, I don't want to give too much away, but it's basically... Yeah. It's, it's like Holland is kind of like the bad twin. And yes. Niles is to go... And Niles has to cover up a lot of what Holland does. And there's some so-called accidental deaths that occur at this place. And... There's this situation with the woman's baby, and it's oh, it's, it's so creepy. It's horrific, but yeah. it's very well done. Mm-hmm. Yes, and really. The kid's great. Yeah, and it's based on a novel by Tom Tyron. Hmm. Tom Tyron was also an actor who played the monster in "I Married a Monster from Outer Space." <laughs> no, <laughs> yeah. it's the writer of. The oh Oscar. my God, Sean! I had no yeah. idea. Oh. Uh, so yeah, it's uh, but it's a it's a great summer movie. The other, it's really and well it's done. A, Beautiful Jerry Goldsmith score that wasn't released yes. for many years, and then finally it's been released. Yes, yeah. um, the cast is also amazing. The kids are played by uh, actual twins, Chris and Martin Udvarnaki. Uh, they're great. Um, Uda Hagen is in it. Diana yes. Maldar, Victor yeah. French, John Ritter is in it. Wow. Uh, wow. It's just really, really good. He's hilarious in it. Yeah, and um, it's uh, directed by Robert Mulligan and the screenplay and the novel uh, by Tom Tyron. So uh, wow. and it's, and it's, it's got that summery, you know, kind of hot summery feel to it. All, it all, you know, it's just really good, but really creepy. So anyway, definitely check out the other. I love that movie. You've seen that, right, Mark? I don't think I have. Oh, I definitely think you check, like it yeah, check it out. Check it out. I absolutely. remember seeing it. I remember seeing it on uh, Channel Two in Northern California. They, yeah. they played it, it on a, TV lot. a lot. Yeah, they played it on Creature Feature. Yeah, I remember seeing this. Uh, yeah. quite a few times in the seventies. Yeah, has any, has anybody ever seen Summer of '84? Summer of '84. I guess not. This it came is. out in this came out in 2018. It's a Canadian film, independent, a really good. I really recommend it. It's about a, it takes place in 1984 and it's about a, a bunch of teenagers. The, the protagonist is a paper boy who it's very much like Fright Night. He's convinced that his neighbor is not a vampire, but a serial killer. Hmm. Okay. And that neighbor is played by Rich Summer, who was one of the ad execs on Mad Men. He was sort of the big burly guy on Mad Men. Really? Okay. <clears throat> um but uh, the the thing about this that I, I recommend most is that he and his teenage friends, the paperboy and his teenage friends, the dialogue is, is terrific. It's very much of the period. It's more of the period than uh, Stranger Wonder Things. Wo- the Wonder Woman 1984 <laughs> was in the sense of the, the music and what they were talking about. Back oh, then. yeah. Okay. yeah. Right, and, right, and, right. and it's a little bit it's a little bit like Stand By Me because some of the conversations they have, like the kids are talking mm. about like how the Ewoks could possibly have fought the empire, you know, <laughs> and, 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 and how they prefer gremlins because that, those are the movies that had just come out. Right. So that's right, what they were right, talking yeah. about. <clears throat> yeah. And the performances are terrific. And it's just, it's, it's horrific because they really do go after the serial killer and it gets scary for them. Mm-hmm. Uh, and there is a, there is a real sense of danger, but it's, just just for the the dialogue and the direction and the actors in it, uh, nobody other than than the guy who plays the serial killer are particularly recognizable. But this is this is a movie worth seeking out. Again, it's it's called Summer of '84. It was made in 2018, and I recommend it. Cool. And it's, and it's a double hit. It's got a guy named Summer, and it's a summer movie. <laughs> oh my God! That's another person named Summer. <laughs> wow! Wow! How about I know what you did last summer? Sure. Well, there you go. As, as a I think, direct yeah. direct summer movie. <clears throat> I think you could put any camp related slasher film. Well, yeah. Friday yes. the thirteenth. Friday the thirteenth. Sleep, Sleepaway camp. Sleepaway yeah. camp. I, I don't think I've seen any of those uh, I know what you did last summer films. Are they any good? You know, I, I saw the first the, one only. I have go ahead, Mark. I think the first one was okay. I mean, it was it was a you know a big cast, right? It was uh, Michelle Geller, it was Jennifer Love Hewitt, it was Ryan Phillips. Yeah, it was Freddie, like a very Freddie Prince Jr. So it was like all yeah. the hot stars at the yeah. time, the kids but, stars. Right. Yeah, it was it's it was, it was very slickly made kind of modern slasher film. But I was kind of underwhelmed by it, I have to admit. I, I saw it way, way later. 
it was a big hit and it spawned yeah. sequels. I never saw any sequels. I thought it was just okay. I thought it was kind of I never mad, saw, se- I never saw the sequels. Everybody, either. everybody looks gorgeous and great and it's shot really well. Okay. But the, but the, I don't know, but the suspense sequences and the killing sequences aren't that great. I, I don't know. It was like, kind of, yeah, kind of milk toast to me. It was almost like a showcase piece for those actors. I think. Yeah. Okay. It was kind of like, I think it started that trend. Like, I remember seeing the poster for it. It was just a poster of like the pretty cast lined up in front of yeah. you. That's all the poster was. Yeah. yeah. That's what they were pushing. Just the, yeah. The yeah. It just, it doesn't, like I said, it's not a terrible movie, but it's like, when I saw it, I was like, wow, this is all, this is all it's, what it was all, about. It but, was like, but it's almost set itself up to be a parody by like, I still know what you did last summer by those scary movie guys, yeah. right? Yeah. That's why I didn't bother to check out the sequels. Cause like, I wasn't that, I was underwhelmed by the original. I mean, you know, yeah. I don't know. I'm, I, yeah, I guess for me, for people at the time that age liked it, but sure. Okay. Yeah. yeah. The, the plot was that these, you know, these kids do something careless yeah, and then yeah. there's a bad guy who's seeking revenge because yeah. of it. Right. So well, like okay. every murder sequence could have been way more nastier and yeah. more original yeah. and gory. And they, they aren't, they're just, they're, yeah, I don't yeah. like sanitized horror. That's what it is. It's sanitized. It's sanitized for like the CW crowd. Yeah, I'm not into exactly. it. That's, a, it's a, like yeah. uh, World War Z was just like a giant snore for many reasons, but like yeah. all the zombie stuff is yeah. tasteful. Yeah. And a, right. Yeah, and apparently the the novel that I know what she did last summer was based on was supposed to be super good. Really? Oh, really? Okay. Mm. Huh. And that's interesting. Yeah. Well, it's funny. Yeah. Sh- Sean mentioned you know the movie didn't have a. A very good poster. I remember that poster, Sean. It, it had to be so one of these like, things where if you like this cast, then you'll see this film. Yeah. And yeah. I miss the days when you had really cool posters, like yeah, this it's kind other of film. Back a little bit now. Well, but, but yeah, there's this right. one film that came out in that glorious summer of '82, which to me I thought was very summery and very hot. And it came out in May 21st, 1982. And I'm talking about The Road Warrior. Oh, now, oh this great is a choice. film. Great choice. Yes. Yeah, yes. Yeah. Part of me, this may sound kind of weird. Yes, it, it's somewhat in a desert. But when I think of Australia, which is where it was shot, I think of it being kind of by the coast. Although the whole thing in the film, you know, there's no fuel and no water and that kind of thing. But right. talk about a hot, arid, dry place. And then what do kids like to do when you get out of high school? You like to work on your car. And this this film has all kinds of great cars, cars yeah. that are made mm-hmm. like totally souped up. But to me, it, it was such a great summer movie in that summer mm-hmm. of 82. Yeah. Yeah. I love that movie. That is, again, it was vying for that time for my favorite action movie with Raiders. Yeah, I'm mm, yeah, right yeah. there with you. <clears throat> but yeah. there were two very different types of film. Yeah. Agreed. And, and that's what I really loved about The Road Warrior because it had a down mm. and dirty, gritty, not slick way of right. unreeling itself. And it was just so good and so visceral. And the, the stunts, my God. And then yeah. I remember watching a making of mini documentary and they were showing that they didn't have any you know, air mattresses or anything like that. They were using cardboard boxes. <laughs> and not only that, people of today, you, you, you need to understand that in 1982 or when George Miller, the director, was directing this film in 81, you know, guys, they, there was no CGI here. Okay. Mm-hmm. But Matt was saying, when you see some of these stunts, these are freaking crazy ass stunts. Yeah. stunts. You're like worried Real. for the stuntmen. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. And, I, and, and I'm sure there were lots of injuries. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Without a doubt. You know, yeah. like uh, Jackie Chan numbers. <laughs> yeah. You know? Yeah. Totally. But, but, it's, but it's so good and you feel it. And, oh, uh, yeah. and that movie just packs a wall up and it's just. It just moves right from the very beginning. I enjoyed the first Mad Max movie, but this sure. one, it just oh, yeah. hits the ground Lovely. running. And I still think it's its still my favorite Road Warrior movie. Yeah. I know people love Fury Road. Yes, it's, yes. It's a good movie, but... It's neat. It's, no, it's I love cool, it, it's but, but I do. I love both, but I, but I think Road Warrior is like the real deal. It's like it's yeah. the real yeah. deal. Yeah. Thank so you. I, w- I would say to like maybe some of those younger listeners who maybe have seen Fury Road and think, oh, this is great. I go back and check out yeah, that see, version from... 1982 yeah. and yeah. this Mel Gibson plays Max who yes. comes in contact with this group of people that have it seems like a little a mini refinery and how that he makes this deal with them it's such a great film I just love Larry's uh, time travel reference of people of today 
<laughs> the kids you of today. Because Larry, it sounds like you came from somewhere else. People well, of today. Well, People of well, today. Mark, you know what? I, I look. I, no, some, no, I get, I get, you live yeah, in the future. We, no, no, there's nothing but, wrong with that. Mark, Mark, Mark. There have been t- when we have been at Monster Palooza and we have a table. We meet a lot of our fans and stuff. And and I remember meeting these ladies. And they go, "Oh, you guys sound like you're 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 so in your fifties." And I'm like, "Well, what, what are you talking about?" And <laughs> well, talking to oh, you. Well, yeah, I, I'm just saying that I I know that there you call them gals. I, yes, yes. Uh, but, but there are some younger people out there. And, and sometimes I think, you know, we mentioned a lot of older films and, and contemporary films. Sure. I think this is a film that if if you've missed out on it, I just think that you'd get a lot of enjoyment out when you Holds look up. at these stunts. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, is it I what's, actually, what's like 40 enjoyed, years old? And holds I enjoyed up people of today. I'm sorry. I just wanted to. <laughs> <laughs> I enjoy, the I people of I, today are so now. Legitimately. <laughs> Has has anybody seen? And I'm just looking this up. I've never seen this movie, but it showed up on a list of summer movies okay. called Escape from Tomorrow. Yeah, oh, yes, yeah. yeah. That's a what weird that kind one? of experimental. Is, is, is it a feature? It's not even. Is it a feature? Film? It's, it's, it's a, a. It's a. It's a feature. It's feature. It yeah. was shot. It was shot on video, but it's, it was shot it's illegal. It was, it was shot oh, illegally in Disneyland. Yeah. In Disneyland, it's right? Weird. Yeah. Disney, Disney like World. Disney World. 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 Okay, yeah. I did yeah. see this. Yes. It's yeah. pretty and bizarre. I enjoyed it. Yeah. Oh, okay. How do you, it's, it's uh, James, fun. how would you describe it? How would you describe that movie? Well, it's about a family vacation, um, uh, dad, mom, and two little kids who it's their last day at Disney World in Florida. The dad gets a phone call in the morning telling him he's been fired. And he's got, he's suddenly in the middle of a midlife crisis. And he starts sort of looking at other women. And mm-hmm. it's kind of creepy. And the whole thing is it's it's in black and white because they had to shoot it that way for technical reasons because they couldn't sort of match the, the color and the lighting the way they had to shoot it on these cameras that they brought into Disney World. Right. And we're, we're shooting a scripted feature. But Gorilla, <laughs> right? They were they on, the, the, on the slide, yeah. completely on the slide. Yes. Yeah. Fantastic. And, mo- and most of the location footage is in the Disney parks. Yeah. yeah. And then they take you through some rides. They could not... For copyright reasons, they couldn't use any of the sound, so they had to have their own sound effects. Yeah, it's very sure. surreal. Yeah. It's very surreal. It's very, very sort of David Lynch. I yeah, think it's yeah. really good. Yeah, me too. It's, it's very interesting. It's, it's <laughs> whether just, or not you, you like it, you got to admit it's just it's the, an interesting the poster, project. The poster is compelling. It's like a Mickey Mouse hand, right? A three-fingered yeah. white glove <laughs> with blood dripping off of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's very weird. Uh, and there's, like a, there's an actress in that film who I believe she was also in the Americans as a, a Russian spy or, or an agent who's really, mm, yeah. <laughs> it's a <laughs> sizzling Weinhold, summer. The Weinhold seal of approval. <laughs> Mark, I, I remember hearing about this film and the talk all about how it was made. I haven't seen it, but I do want to check it out. I don't think it was ever like officially released, yeah. right? Because no, not, it's like maybe it can't not be officially. Out of thing. Yeah, yeah. Well, is this is this like a YouTube thing? Yeah, no, it's, not on, it's not on YouTube, but it's on. I think it's on Shutter. Yeah, and yeah. the the story of how it was made has become almost as important as watching the film itself because yeah. you yeah. want to learn more about well, exactly how did this come together and. Because it's so surreal, it's like a puzzle. It's like, well, what what is it really about? What is what was he trying to say? Is yeah, it, yeah. Is it anti Disney? Some people have so many people have spoken out against it, saying it's too cynically anti Disney. Yeah. I'm not convinced that it is. Yeah, I, I, I didn't get that. No, no. Me, me neither. Interesting. It's available yeah. on Prime Video apparently as well. Mm, okay. Yeah. Okay. And by the way, that actress's name is Annette Mahendru. All right. Ah. She, she she must have been one of the uh, the French uh, uh, teenagers that the guy was lusting after. Yes, but it's uh, you are correct. It, sir. It, it also it also brings up the myth that I think that started on the Conan O'Brien show that the turkey legs were actually made out of emu meat, <laughs> which. Um, <laughs> Well, shout out to Adam Holtz uh, for the union <laughs> reference, but, um, but but that has been dispelled, and I don't think that the movie played it up any in any serious way. It's not emu meat; it is actually turkey meat in the turkey legs, but that is included in the yeah. in the film. It's it's a it's a really interesting film, especially if you're a fan of the Disney parks. It's like, whoa, yeah. yeah. Why would yeah. you advertise emu meat if it was <laughs> emu meat? I know. Like, I would, I, I would not stop people. me from having that leg at yeah. all. Well, 
True. Well, there's an emu that's like part of a big commercial campaign. So oh, yeah, yeah. Right. I, yeah. I, mean, I don't see any turkey ever. <laughs> I don't see any turkey out there going, hey, I'm a mascot, you know, so <laughs> Give it's, it time. The new, it's the new white meat. <laughs> but, 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 but there's also been a lot of discussion about how Disney was going to react to this, and they decided more or less to ignore it. Yeah, they yeah, thought that that was the best approach, right? And um, and that, I think that is the best approach. Yeah, it's like it, yeah. is, it is its own little thing. It's they, a, they have it's nothing a, to worry about. Yeah, very it's, very very low budget independent yeah. film. That, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a Considering all the money it made, right? Yeah. You know, <laughs> right, you know. right. And I don't think that the director, uh, whose name is Randy Moore, really has a huge career ahead of him necessarily. He did an interesting thing. He got a lot of publicity out of it. Mm-hmm. What, whatever else he does might be interesting enough to see. But yeah, yeah. Um, that's basically all it is. Wow. Yeah. Interesting. Okay. okay. Well, hey, I've got one that is kind of similar to A Perfect Getaway, but a different sort of twist. This one is from 2006, and it's called Turistas. Mm. Oh, oh I, I've never seen that. Is that good? It's I not as good this. as A Perfect Getaway, but okay. I did enjoy it. The plot is, so you've got Alex, who is Josh Duhamel, mm. and his sister B, who is Olivia Wilde, and her friend Amy, who is Bo Grant, and they're backpacking in Brazil, and their bus crashes, and it strands all the passengers and then they're joined by a couple British guys and an Australian woman who knows Portuguese. And the group ends up in this cabana bar where they get served some drug drinks. They all wake up on the beach after being robbed of their luggage, money, documents, and everything. And so they're walking around trying to figure out what to do. And they come to this nearby village. They find a kid named Kiko, and he knows some English So he offers to take them to his uncle's house, which is in the forest. And so there they can go and they can wait for a ride. And at the house, they get food, clothing, but they also find like prescription drugs in a drawer filled with passports. I'm like, what is this? (laughs) Of course, they decide to spend the night. (laughs) Of course. (laughs) Of course. And in the morning, they are greeted by a doctor named Zamora. (laughs) <laughs> and some of his medical assistants and a bunch of armed henchmen. Okay, spoiler alert. This place turns out to be an organ harvesting operation. Oh, oh. And, they oh. and they all have to figure this. out how to get out of there. <clears throat> right. And I thought it was pretty fun. I mean, there are, there are some parts where it kind of, it's like, okay, move it along. But overall, I have to say this was pretty fun, what I call disposable entertainment. <laughs> I think at the time it was kind of compared to hostel a lot, right? Yeah. Like yeah but it's a, diff- like, a different yeah. take, which by the way, another great summer movie. That's true. Mm-hmm. That's true. Uh, it's the yeah. only Eli Roth movie, as far as I know, that I really like. Yeah, and it was too, uh, controversial yeah. at the time though. Oh, yes. yeah. 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 2005 mm-hmm. Eli Roth. And yeah, it's a similar kind of thing. It's a bunch of these kids who, you know, there's this guy that tells them like, hey, there's this place in Eastern Europe. It's a great nightclub. And there's also, it's like all the women are really Easy women, yeah. Yeah, Yeah. and then you can dance and there's a spa and it's going to be great. And so they decide to go and sure enough, all these (laughs) women are all over them and they're just getting drunk every night. And then gradually they notice that their friends are, are not coming back. <laughs> yeah, like yeah. they go off with a woman. They never, like, oh no, that person went home. Like, well, yes. they wouldn't do that. Right. <laughs> and yeah, you find out, spoiler alert, <laughs> this place <laughs> is where rich business people go, or anyone who has the money, I guess, yeah. can go to torture someone. Yeah, wealthy yes. people can get their kicks by just torturing and killing people. Yeah. It's, and the, it's, the, it's the last step of like of entertainment for them because they've done everything else. You know? Yeah, now people... Paint this thing as torture porn. And I've argued this, we've argued this over many episodes where I don't feel it is. I think it's the natural progression of the story because this thing doesn't start with that. What it really starts with is it's a slow build. It's these kids partying and they meet this guy. And then, you know, the way that the story unfolds where, you know, they're at this place and you just get a bad feeling about everything and that tension builds and builds and builds. And then finally toward the end, yeah, 
it really, you know, the shit hits the fan and now it's a torture fest and everyone is trying to just survive. Right. And some people do, some people don't, some people survive then don't. And it's, it's, yeah. it's, it's yeah. good. But I, mean, but it's, I, it's I thought it was, going, it's, it's, it's exactly what it's supposed to exactly. be. Exactly. You're right. Yeah. It's not right. Right. Yeah. It's a remake of the most dangerous game, really. In some ways. Yeah. yeah. In some ways. Yeah. 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 You're right though. It's, it's like, yeah, totally. Um, but yeah, no, I, I but I do is, enjoy that yeah. movie and, uh, yeah, I mean, and so. yeah, I think that it gets painted with the, I don't, I don't really like the term torture porn anyway, because we get, it, once that movie came out, every, like every other horror film that came out was thrown that title label, which mm. is ridiculous. I mean, yeah. yeah. But you understand, you know. I mean, sometimes they feel like, is it absolutely necessary to show visually certain things being cut off or whatever. I mean, y- like you the know, original, the, I mean, you know, anything from the original Friday the 13th to, you know, I mean, Dawn so of the Dead. Movies. No, yeah, yeah. good point. It's, good point, Sean. It's, it's, it's you, you know, know, it's funny too. I saw that in a, in a theater and it's funny watching an audience when the most visceral thing is something they can truly identify with. And there's that <laughs> one scene where the person gets his Ar- Achilles tendons. Yes. Oh uh, yeah. And yeah. that's the one the audience goes. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's like a uh, pet cemetery. Yeah. Yeah, because they can imagine that. Or, yeah, or yeah. Um, audition. Yeah. Oh my God. Um, yeah. That I mean, happened yeah. during the summer. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I know. It's uh, yeah. You're right, though. It's like those those little things really can get to you. That's yeah. the thing yeah. too. That's what I, I mean. That's why I love some of these vacation ones where you know you're at some place, Brazil, one of the most dangerous <laughs> countries in the world. Yeah. Let's yeah. go backpacking. Yeah. 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 <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> Right. I'm um, not hey, leaving the hotel, okay? Yeah, lock the door. Um, okay, here's hey, here's a classic Twilight Zone episode that I think works kind of well as a summer entertainment. Oh. And that'll be from the third season, The Midnight Sun. Oh, yeah. oh. one of my favorite oh, episodes yeah. of all of them. Great, great, mm. uh, great episode. So uh, uh, Lois good. Middleton, she's in this apartment, and basically the earth has gone off its course and it's heading mm. towards the sun. It's just getting hotter and hotter. Yeah. And in that episode, you feel it. I mean, everybody oh. is just sticky and sweaty and like yeah. just tired from the heat. And it's just, it's really creepy. And she's doing this painting, you know, and the painting melts and it's so hot. <laughs> and it's just a great, it's a pretty simple little story, but it's great. And it has a great twist ending. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But, it's, but that's one where like, wow, you can, you feel like that's one to watch in a hot summer afternoon. Yeah. <laughs> you know what, you know what, Sean, it's so funny you should bring that up because I mean, we've all had that time when, you know, you either got to clean in the garage or you're working on your car or something and it, yeah, you got to do it. And it's really right. hot outside and sun is and the heat, And yeah. And the heat just sucks all that energy out of you. And then yeah. after working an hour, you got to do it. And then you come inside, you sitting in the cool air and you just, you just can't find the energy to go back out because yeah. the sun is just zapped just all like, that. It takes out yes. the life out of you. Yeah. And when you watch that episode, Sean, that's what I feel. Yeah, and it's, yeah, it's, yeah. it's funny. I mean, it's a great episode. It's not one I enjoy watching as much because just that the feeling like, oh, uh, just <laughs> I'm getting tired just watching it, you know, because I just feel like the, the energy is being sapped out of me. Yeah. <laughs> well, when any film does that thing where they show the heat yeah. emanating from like a pavement or yeah, yeah. any yes. kind of environment, right, right. that yes. really puts me there immediately. Yeah. Because again, uh, well, you can you can relate directly to it. It's not an right. Alien it's something thing. right. It's yeah. not right, a fantasy element, right? Um, another quick one that I want to mention is uh, one that this is a giallo, an Italian murder mystery thriller from the seventies, nineteen seventy five. Pretty good. It's pretty gruesome and weird. It's called Autopsy, mm. and uh, oh. this is with, with uh, Mimsy Farmer, and uh, this is a weird, gruesome movie where. It basically, there's like these rash of suicides happening in Rome during this heat wave. And people are thinking it's maybe because of sunspots. And meanwhile, Mimsy Farmer is in, gets involved with this guy who's investigating the so-called suicide of his sister, I think it is. But there's, there's something else going on. There's actually like a murderer loose too. And it's just, it's a, it's a very kind of tricky kind of mystery giallo. And it's, it's really good though. It's got some pretty gruesome killings in it. Mm-hmm. Mimsy Farmer works in a morgue and she envisions seeing the bodies coming right, rising from the morgue slab. Cool. That's cool. Yeah. It's really weird, but it's really good. But it has that because it takes place like during this heat wave in Rome, it really gives across this feeling of like people going stir crazy from the heat and, and people dying all over the place. What's going on. It's pretty good. It's a good one to check out. 
There's um, also Night of the Big Heat from Great Britain in 1967. Oh, yeah, yeah. More sci-fi, but yeah. But yeah. It's more sci-fi, yeah. It's an alien invasion uh, yep. story where, yep. where there's an island uh, called Farah off the coast of England where there, it's not F-A-R-A. Mm. And they're experiencing this extreme heat wave where like they – They'll pour a, a glass of beer, and then it's so hot the beer explodes. You know, <laughs> yeah. And yeah. All, the, all, the, the, all the engines and the cars are exploding, so everybody's breaking down. And uh, Christopher Lee shows up as this scientist trying to figure out what's happening. Peter uh, Cushing's in it. Peter, Peter Cushing is this local doctor, also trying to figure out what's happening. It was directed by Terrence Fisher, the classic Hammer director. Yeah, yeah. But but it wasn't a Hammer release. It was Planet Film Productions, which must have been a really small outfit. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Based on a novel by John Langston from 1959, where the aliens were like giant spiders. But in this movie, maybe because of budget reasons, they're more like these big, hairy, uh, lit up things. Yeah, it's um, weird. It, it's, it's similar. It reminds me a lot of Island of Terror with, with the silicon yeah. monsters. Mm. It's kind of like that. It's not as effective as that. You don't see the monsters that much in this one, though. And there's not um, much to see. They're just no, these, but it's know. kind of effective. I like, you know, I like, I like that movie. I like any any '60s British sci-fi yeah. or horror film where, like, yeah. a lot of the yeah. characters just are sitting around a pub for a lot, a lot, and right. just talking about what's going on. But I, yeah. in a good, in a good way. I don't, I don't mind it. But no, but it's a kind of a good movie. But you're right. It's like very much like the, the heat wave kind of idea, mm. and, and everybody's yeah. all hot and bothered and. Yeah, and, and well, just sing around drinking Guinness. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, this wasn't even really on my list because I've talked about it before, but I just want to throw this one out because if we're talking about heat and feeling that heat in a film, there's yeah, a movie yeah. that's one of my favorite films, I would say, in the past 20 years. Okay. And it's called These Final Hours, mm-hmm. and All it's right. an Australian science fiction apocalyptic thriller, I guess you would call it. And the premise is that there's this meteor that's hit the earth and there's a shock wave that's going around the earth and it's wiping out everything. And Australia, like on the beach, is like the last place that it's going to hit. Oh, and right. everybody knows that it's coming and there's no way to get away from it. There's no right. way to survive it. So right. everyone is just doing whatever they're going to do in their final hours. Yeah. And so there's this guy and he's, his name's James and he's played by Nathan Phillips, who was also in Wolf Creek. I would say also another good summer horror movie. So James is with his girlfriend. She's pregnant, but he's got like this other woman and he wants to go meet this woman. And he's like, he's just not the nicest guy. He's immature and he just wants what he wants. So he is going to leave her during this these last hours and go to this big party that's going on where his girlfriend is. Oh. And so he's driving to go to this place. And, you know, as he's driving, he sees people just going berserk and murdering people. And then he sees that there are these two guys that are about to rape this little girl. And he oh. saves the little girl. You know, he kills the two guys. And then the girl's like, well, I need to be with my daddy. Can you get me to my daddy? And he's like, oh. No, and like, well, we're gonna go to the party first, and then I'll take you to your dad. So he goes to the party, and everybody is freaking out. They're on drugs, and they're and the guy who ha- has the party has built his own bunker that he thinks he's gonna ride out this thing in. Jeez. And he and this James tells the guys like, no way, there's no way you're gonna you're gonna die down there. Yeah. And anyway, so the rest of the movie is really him battling with his own baser instincts and taking care of this little girl. Mm. And so even though it's the last hours of planet earth, he is going on this journey of growing up Mm. and learning to do maybe the right thing and, you know, and rediscover his humanity and his soul. (laughs) And it's beautiful. It is scary. I mean, it's obviously it's a grim tale, right? but so well done. And wow. well acted, and I really I can't recommend this thing strongly enough. What's it These called? final hours. These final hours, 2013, uh, written and directed by Zach Hilditch. Okay, mm. cool. So good. I'm curious to find out your guys' uh, idea about this franchise. It's all they're all summer movies because it all takes place on Independence Day, which is the Purge franchise. Oh, <laughs> no. okay. Yeah. 
That's true. It just takes place. In, yeah, you're right. It is my guilty pleasure. <laughs> it really oh. is. I've seen all the movies. I watched the TV show both seasons. Wow. wow. I love the idea of the purge probably more than I like the purge. <laughs> you know, I, 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 I haven't seen the sequels of the show. I've seen the original film. And I think it's, I, I think it's okay. I, I think it's a little, there are some logic problems. I enjoy it. I don't think it's a masterpiece, but I think it, it is a very clever idea and I can see why it, it became a successful franchise because it's a pretty damn clever idea. I, I do. The, I the universe they create. Yeah, yeah. I enjoy very much. And as you say, there are some logic things, but I like the first one. I really like the second one. Mm. How, how many? How many? I films think there are were there now? Four, four, and four. I did They're not care for too. the last two. The final purge was the last one. Yeah, I did I not care for the final too. two. No, but I okay. want to get Matt a T-shirt that just says "I believe in the purge." That- <laughs> <laughs> I'm always rooting for the purge. I really am. see. Uh, <laughs> see, for me, the, mm-hmm. I mean, when I when I get. To watching something like that, I envision, oh, they're going to come and take my collection and stomp yeah, on it. Yeah, that's what they're going to do. That's and what they want out of the and I can't, so I just can't, toys being stolen. Oh, they just, they just want to kill no, you. Oh, they no, don't care about Sean, your toys. no, family first. <laughs> okay, just make sure. Yeah, they just want to kill you. They don't care about your toys. <laughs> well, I, why can't I care about both, Mark? Yeah, you, you, you can. I can. Care about both. Yeah. They're not going to take your collection. They're going to destroy it just for the fun of it. <laughs> See, and why do I want to, the, Mark? Why do I want to watch that? I because it's watch. fiction. They, they just want to open the boxes. Larry. It's not that's actually all. happening oh, to you. It's like oh, 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 that, that, oh. that's great. That's what I'm going to do on the purge. <laughs> I'm going to come in your house in a mask. The toy purge. The toy purge. <laughs> no, no longer no, Larry. All no, of Larry's no longer men. There goes the seventy. <laughs> <laughs> See, I knew you'd bring up the 70s air in the Micronaut figure package. You know, I I knew you would. I knew you would. I just I just looked at that too. It just made sure that the seal is still it's very tight. No, it's it hasn't tried to escape secure. or anything. No, it hasn't. Okay, and good. again, the air there's from 1976. No yeah. I'm Larry. sure if you well, I'm sure no if you open up. Larry. But no, I, 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 I I'm sorry, Mark. I can't I it's hard for me to get into that. So I have not seen Isn't that movies. funny though? Because there are other horror movies that you do enjoy. But, but, but it's not. But it's your choice could also be ruined. <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> like, <laughs> like what? When worlds collide? Is that what it is? Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. Your toys are gone. How much? Yeah. How much but, space but, on that ship? But you think they're going to allot you? <laughs> yeah. Hey, well, I got to get yeah. my robot collection on this thing. <laughs> Look, so you have uh, five well, then my the kid can't go. Well, see, no, 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 the no. Bikes. no, no, no. You see, I, I'm not crazy. I would, I would try to take maybe my six or seven favorite six items. Six or seven? Okay. <laughs> yeah, you know, and, and look. I, I, and what are you going to do with them, Larry, on the new planet? I, I'll yeah, build a little just... shelf. I'll build okay. a little shelf. Nothing there. battery operated. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Larry, Larry, maybe that's why you appreciate Raiders so much, because at the last shot, everything is in a box. Ooh, I, I do yes. love that scene. I do love that scene. <laughs> and, it, you know, everything's kind of cataloged, and, and I like that. Oh, yeah. So. yeah. yeah organized. Oh, the boxes. <laughs> <laughs> what, a, know, what a great I, summer. Well, I got to tell you, this is this has been really hot and fun, let me tell you. <laughs> yeah, I know. You've uh, been bringing up some great, like, uh, beach and summary things. But, should we do uh, a lightning uh, round? Yeah, let's lightning do a round. lightning round. Let's do a lightning, lightning round. round. Yeah. yeah. Is this, what is do you got? The, is this the first seasonally oriented show you guys have? Um, well, have we, we, we do one. holiday I mean, ones. Well, how do you have the holidays, but, but, seasons, but seasons. I think seasons. 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 I think you have some nice shows in the future. For you know, I, we should do. Well, like winter, said, we should definitely do a winter horror one. I think we've talked about yeah. that in the past. Ice. So. There's, a, there's a lot to be said about yeah. you know ice movies. You know. Yeah. 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 So, mm-hmm. This is cool. Yeah, this is yeah. good. Uh, spring. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know. Midsummer. Midsummer. Oh, well, midsummer. Yeah, that's true. Midsummer. Yeah. Yeah. Somebody yeah. brought up midsummer. That's well, right. would you yeah. would you consider that like a summery movie? Well, yeah, such sure. a disturbing film. It, 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 it feels like a summer film. It feels more yeah, like yeah, yeah. yeah. It yeah. Is. It's, it's in the title. It, the name it's of it's midsummer. It's, it's in the summer. title. Yeah. And again, again, <laughs> once was enough for me. <laughs> <laughs> All right, like, and when no one brought up one crazy summer. Oh yeah, well, it was crazy. That was a horror though. <laughs> 
Right. Oh, really? Or Endless right. Summer? That wasn't. That was a- well, okay. That, right. that, that's great. Sounds but, like but, a word title. But, but Endless you, Summer. But what, what do you say we, we do our lightning round? All right. Okay. How about, how about Empire of the Ants? Yes, Ooh. totally. Oh, yeah. That's oh, a good yeah. one because, yeah. Yeah. yeah, they're all in that like resort. Like they're in like, yes. they, they oh, go to man. kind of buy some property on that island or whatever and yeah that's From yeah that's a good one 77 is that the joan call is that joan yeah, collins that, that, that was bert, yeah. I, bert i gordon's follow-up to food of the gods yes right, right. which i also so, saw in the theater joan yeah collins, me too robert lansing yeah yeah um, yeah, yeah, Empire of the Ants is fun. Yeah, was Food of like, the Gods summer? I guess that's a getaway place, kinda, right? Yeah, Isn't it they, they go to, it's more like an, an island, but it's a little foggy. But it's kind of it's fun. Okay, works. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 Great. Okay, you ruined okay. it. Fine, <laughs> Sean, you got a couple for us? Yeah. Well, I think you have to name. Wait a three. minute. Hold on. Hold on. Mark, did you have any more? Normally, yeah. what we do with okay, this, yeah, yeah, oh, is we more. we throw. A I'm couple. sorry. I'm sorry. I apologize. I rushed it. I jumped the gun. No, that's okay. How about 1979's Tourist Trap? It's on my list. Oh, yeah. 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 yeah that's a fun one. Yeah, how about that? So yeah, no, I got Yeah, teenagers go to the desert, including an incredibly, insanely hot Tanya Roberts. Tanya Roberts? Um, Chuck Connors? Just, just don't, go to a, don't go to a roadside in or place owned by Chuck Connors ever. That's, that's <laughs> the rule. Yeah. That's the message of that movie. That's a yeah. weird, that movie is so bizarre. Yeah. It, it's like, it's kind of supernatural, which you don't think so at first. It's like, it's right. always, yes. it's always mm-hmm. thrown in the slasher category, but it's more than that. Yeah. It's like Chuck Connors is this crazy guy who has telekinesis and he controls <laughs> mannequins. And yeah. it's, he, it's, bizarre. it's great though. It's actually really fun. It's crazy. It's, it's got a great Pino Donaggio score. Yeah. Yeah. It's a great and, movie. And, and, and I, and Chuck Connors plays a great heavy. Yes. Yeah, yeah, he's ca- oh, yeah. Yes. Yep. He's kind of plays my, supposedly two brothers. Yeah. That's great. My last lightning round, the classic children of the corn. Oh, oh yeah. 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 The original. Yeah. 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 Not it's a still movie, not a great movie. Creepy. And, and it, and it's yeah. still, if it were really good, it would have made me hate corn, but I still love corn. <laughs> I do too. How do you explain that? True. Uh, true. And corn's not a vegetable, is it? It's a grain, right? It's a starch, which uh, I thought is that my my remember my mom and dad or my dad being upset that we wouldn't eat lima beans and other kinds of things. And I said, well, we'll eat corn. Corn's not a vegetable. It's like, <laughs> right. it's like it's a it's a grain. <laughs> and wow. like, huh. Yeah, I forget what the deal is with corn. Corn has never <laughs> come straight with me. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I, those, I, are, I, those are my lightning round choices. Nice oh, one. OK, nice one. Nice. One. nice. Yeah. Sean. Okay, well, I would say you have to mention this trio of beach party of horror films. You got, of course, the horror of Party Beach. Uh-huh. Of course. <laughs> uh-huh. yes. Definitely on my list. Yes. Yes. Uh, the Beach Girls and the Monster. Also oh, on my uh, list. A great okay. one. And the, and? Monster, the Monster of Piedras Blancas. Oh, it's on my list. Oh. My list. Oh. If you don't know these films, the listeners, like, check them all out. They're from the 50s and 60s, and they're all great movies. They all have great monsters in them. They all have lots of surf music and yes. girls and it's beaches and it's just hot rodders. I mean, it's got it all. It is a sixties, fifties beach heaven mm. yes. and monsters. Yes. Yes. And, and, and in uh, the horror of party beach music by the Del Airs. That's right. Yes. <laughs> Del Airs. Check them out, people. Um, and don't pretend today. that you don't know who they are. Yes. People, um, of, well, people of today, check them out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Um, also, a couple of quick ones. Uh, there's a great movie from 1960. I know Matt knows about this one. It's called The Horrors of Spider Island. Sure, yeah. yes. And this movie, yeah. this basically a nightclub manager is uh, flying in a plane with a bunch of dancing girls, and they crash the plane. <laughs> they go, they end up on an island. And this is like their hot, steamy, tropical island, yep. right? And there's lots of nubile dancing girls and. And basically, the nightclub manager gets bitten by this bizarre, really big spider and turns into a monster and starts terrorizing the girls. And it's great. And if that, <laughs> if that is a great summer movie, because it's also known under the alternate title of It's Hot in Paradise. <laughs> because they also promoted the movie as kind of like an ex- sexploitation movie is in addition to being a horror film. So that's definitely one to check out. And, and if I, I'm not mistaken, you gave me 
The Spider from Spider Island. That's right. Uh, Severin Films, who put out the Blu-ray of the film, also had a, an actual little vinyl figure of the cool spider, which I got, and of course I got from Matt for his birthday. So I thought you were going to say, I thought you were going to say, you gave me the spider bite. That's what I thought you were going to say. <laughs> yes. Uh, hey, what Sean and I do. Yeah, that's <laughs> a whole. The privacy yeah. of my meat locker. Yeah, well, turn, um, turn your okay. face away. You don't want one, to one more. One more. I got to throw out. This is a favorite of all of ours. I know. 1977 Shockwaves. Oh, oh yeah. Okay. Shockwaves yeah. is great because it's a bunch of uh, tourists get stuck in an island where Peter Cushing is in charge of a bunch of Nazi zombies. Yeah, and of course. Can, you got you got Brooke Adams in a bikini. You got mm. um, <laughs> John Carradine as a crusty. Uh, boat captain mm. and you got lots of great scary cool nazi zombies oh they're they they are so good drenched day it's it's hot it's scary it's great great yeah it's steamy music water score. and then these great yeah. underwater shots of these nazi zombies yeah so good underwater like yeah. coming at you like slowly it's great oh and I then scribbled that. faces that is on my, that is on yeah. my list now that is yeah. oh that is a great that, one. that is a great one it's 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 a simple premise and yeah. really uh manages to achieve this really creepy mood all the way through yeah probably the best of the very small subgenre of nazi horrors this is on the <laughs> <I think it's laughs> well, actually a few I think others. the first right maybe yeah i think so yeah yeah it's, it's, it's the, the best, best. yeah well uh, first i mean the best I mean, I was going to go through a, a list, but Sean took most of them. And so all I have is one left. Um, what? Kind you of had a, those on your list? Yeah. Well, I had three of those that you had. Really? I mean, you, went, you did six of them, Sean. It's a lightning so, round. <laughs> okay. So I'm going to lightning now Do round seven. one. Okay. So this is a film that takes place at the beach from 1960. Also a classic Burt I. Gordon film, Tormented with a uh, Richard yeah, Carl, yeah. Sam oh, Susan Gordon, one. Julie Reddy. And it's, it's, think of it, that this guy, he's going to get married to this woman that he loves, but the old girlfriend's coming to pester him. Hey, you, you're going to marry me. And so he kind of lets her fall <laughs> to her death off this I, lighthouse. Yeah. And What's so you've exactly? got to say, help to save her. Butterfingers. <laughs> <laughs> well, kind of. And so he feels guilty and you're not really sure, is this really a spirit that comes back to haunt him or right. is it his mind? Oh, yeah. His conscience, and then, yeah. And then the other thing is there's other people who may hear him talk or or, and so, mm-hmm. or right. get involved. And so maybe he has to commit murder again. And That's it's, a it's, fun, it's got a lot of fun kind of ghost effects. And yeah, it does. And it's, it's got it's, a great it's, moment where like he thinks he's holding the severed head ghost oh. of, his, of his, the woman and she goes, Tom Stewart, Tom Stewart killed, killed me. me. Yes. Tom right, Stewart yeah. kills me. <laughs> great. And if, if, if you're not familiar with the film, listeners, uh, you can also type in on YouTube uh, Tormented yeah. Trailer, and it shows you the trailer, mm-hmm. and it's, it's really cool. Fun. I think that sequence yeah, is it's And fine. it's a lot of fun. So yeah. that's a beach one. summary movie. Nice. James? Okay. Uh, a couple of shark exploitation films from China <laughs> that are wow. available on YouTube. Uh, one of them is just called Huge Shark. <laughs> From, from 2021. And it's, that was um, the greatest title ever. That's so and, good. It's, and it's about these, these young, uh, you know, these young people on a boat and they get terrorized by a huge shark. And one of them <laughs> is a very shapely woman. And there's a lot of gratuitous shots of her swimming with a bikini on. Imagine that, that seems to be what it's all How about. How dare they? What summer's all about. <laughs> And also one called Land Shark. Uh, these are both from these are both from twenty. <laughs> is there really a movie called Land Shark? Not to be confused with the Land Shark from twenty seventeen that was made in the U.S., which is pathetic. Uh, this is also a low budget effort, but with much better CG, CGI effects. Oh, don't and yet, don't see the bad Land Shark movie. <laughs> no, 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 don't don't see them up. Don't see it on a double bill with huge <laughs> shark. <laughs> right, but this shark it's like a scientific experiment, and it actually burrows. Under the earth and chases people, and yeah. it's actually wow. it's actually a lot of fun. Okay, and these, are both, these are both on YouTube subtitles, so check them out. All right. Okay. Um, also, I brought it up before uh, from 1977 with the late great George Siegel, Roller Coaster, where he plays the oh. amusement park safety inspector, oh, wow. uh, who's at who's at uh, playing a cat and mouse game with Timothy Bottoms who's a terrorist extortionist who's blowing up roller coasters. It's, it's, it's a wonderful, wonderful movie. It was in sense around, but it's so much better than it sounds. It's yeah, like, it I, is I, fun. I recommend it. Yeah. I, I loved it because I had my first real makeout session with a girl during that movie. <laughs> nice, nice. Ooh. 
Yeah. So as, as much as I love that movie, Matt, you got more out of it than I did. Still. <laughs> and, then the, and then the sense around, you know, yeah, really? like, oh. and then and then a couple of novels that, you know, I've brought up before. One of them is from 1978. It's called oh. Quonset by James F. Murphy. And it's about a serial killer whose van in this New England town, his van is his kill room. And he terrorizes the entire town during the summer. Wow. And then the other uh, the other one is a Stephen King novella called App Pupil. Uh, oh, yeah. It was in the Different Seasons collection, which is mm-hmm. seasonal. All these stories are seasonal. Oh, yeah. uh, right. That story was called Summer of Corruption. And it's about a kid who, when the summer starts, he's riding his bike in a safe suburban neighborhood. When kids should be out playing, he's obsessed with the local Nazi in hiding, and he's trying to get the dark, uh, the dark stories from him. Uh, mm. And it's and it's a fantastic. It was adapted into a movie, which was not very faithful. Well, it was faithful enough, but it wasn't that successful. Right. And they mm-hmm. fucked they fucked around with the ending for the for the mm. real effect. Read the original 1982 story in different season at Pupil. It's fantastic. Cool. All right. Very good. By the way, by the way, somebody right now in this podcast has to write a script I just thought of called Nazi Shark. <laughs> <laughs> I think that would make a great movie. We're, we're on it, Sean. I will, on send it. You, I will send you the first draft Nazi after we're shark. done. Okay. It's already, it's already. Other, uh, say, other title would be Really White Shark. <laughs> yeah. master, I, I, master shark i, I want to think that, that the, the asylum studio might already have done that. you're right probably yeah <laughs> matt cool. okay well here are a few night tide 1961 oh yeah oh, uh, curtis yeah. harrington film yeah. stars dennis hopper he's a sailor on shore leave in santa monica meets a woman named mora played by linda lawson yeah and she makes her living on the pier as a mermaid in a sideshow. Yeah. More of the mermaid. But as the story goes on, we learn that she may be a siren, the legendary creature, the siren, who lures Mm. sailors to their deaths. And uh, that's a fun one. And that's one of those ones that uh, captures, yeah, but it captures that pure atmosphere so well, you know, beautifully black and white. Yeah, really nicely shot. Yeah. Creepy and uh, really low budget, but yeah, uh, yeah. But, but it works it, in that, his favor. I agree completely. True. Yeah, yes. And now here's one that I know certainly Sean and I both enjoy. We brought it up before, but who can kill a child? Oh, God, also yes. known as Island of the Damned. Yeah, 1976 yeah. Spanish horror film, and uh, this film is about an English couple. So they're vacationing and they go to this island where. It seems like all the adults are gone and they can't find any adults. It's just children running around. And they soon learn that the children have killed all the adults and they're not done yet. And the wife in this couple, she's pregnant. And during the film, she even gets the feeling that the baby is angry at her. Like against her. Yeah. Yeah. It's so it, good. It's so good. It's like it's, it's like very mysterious. Like it's kind of like the birds with yes, kids. Yeah, yeah. It's, and there's it's a, like it's like why is it happening? You don't know. It's like it's just oh, yeah. There's it's crazy. never really explained. No, no. Huh. Mm-hmm. But but there's a great thing where like they turn a corner when they're trying to discover what's happening on this island, and they see a bunch of kids just beating this guy like they're beating a pinata. <laughs> yeah. Oh, and they're oh, laughing and it's oh man i love that good. one great one. Yeah. Oh, wow uh there's a fun this this next one is one that is i wouldn't say it's a super great movie but i do enjoy it and it's called the ruins mm. 2008 that. yeah that was on my list that's not yeah. bad actually and, and bad. I, I do it's yeah it's not a masterpiece but no. i had a lot of fun with it the idea is good yeah you yeah. got you know uh two american couples they're in mexico they uh, meet this German tourist, Matthias, who's looking for his brother, Heinrich. Heinrich's last location was this Mayan ruin in the jungle. So they go to the ruin and there's all these armed Mayan villagers that they try to reason with, but uh, they're really violent. And the, one of the women in the group steps on a vine and they're like, Ugh! 
So this all leads to them discovering that there are these killer carnivorous vines that are in these ruins. Yeah. Temple. Yeah. And, and, uh, and there's a lot, I just, it's shot really well. It's, yeah. uh, it's acted competently. It's, it's like, it's like some CGI, but it's not too bad. It's not yeah. bad. And there's, yeah. and, and there's fun stuff with like, you know, the, the vines will infect you and get yeah. under your skin. Yeah. So you see that stuff, you know, crawling yeah, through yeah, yeah, yeah. their skin. And then there's a great scene where like the vines envelop someone's foot and then when they tear it off, like all the flesh from the leg is gone, you know, yeah. and yeah, just, so just good stuff. And yeah. they can imitate sounds, which also mm. plays a oh, yeah, kind of an yeah. important part in the story. So that's all a great right. one. And we brought up horror of Party Beach. Right. And I think if we were going to have a double feature, we will also have to put on there Humanoids from the Deep. Oh, oh yes, oh, it's yeah, almost yeah. the same movie. Yeah, you're only, uh, only with lots of sex and lots of sex. And, yeah. It is the same basic premise where you're you right, got these right. weird mutated undersea creatures that want to breed with humans. Right, mm-hmm. and they do, and, on and they do, and they do it a lot. <laughs> 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 and uh, you know, it's got one of our past guests, Greg Travis, is in it, mm. and um, it's just fun. It's Doug you know, yeah, it's. <laughs> Definitely has a grindhouse feel to it. Yes, yes. But so the monster Roger costumes. Production. Yes, right. Of course. <clears throat> I guess I I read that it was originally offered to Joe Dante, but he turned it down. Oh, okay. <laughs> I think well, it was a little too perverse for him. Yeah. Well, it was actually a woman director who did *Humanism from the Deep* too. Yeah, Barbara Peters. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, and, and one, of, one of the first scores of James Horner. Is wow. That right? Is that right? Yeah. Really. Okay. Mm-hmm. Wow. wow. Okay. And the creatures were created by Rob Bottin. Oh, yeah, pretty the good too. Thing. Yeah. Yeah. I love the creatures. I, I think they're wonderful. So yeah. Mark, put that put Mark, put that on your list too. I, I think that movie was shot in Mendocino. Oh, I think you wow. may be right. Yeah. And a There's friend a whole of mine kind of was actually ex- scene a friend of the... mine was actually an extra in it. Oh, wow. Nice. Oh. Yes. yes. Has, Bob, has Mark Bob Pitta Bob. done any pictures from that location? <laughs> yeah, Bob, Bob Cohen, a guy that I know, uh, still lives in Mendocino, but he was a uh, he was an extra in it. Cool. Wow. Um, well, I, I love it. I love it. And then I'm going to go out on this. This is an old favorite. The Flesh Eaters, 1964. On my oh. list, too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, great. It is. Jack it's Curtis, so super violent for its time, especially... Yeah. Uh, yeah, extremely 60s. lurid. A bunch yes. of pretty unlikable characters wind up on an island where they have to fight off this flesh eating. I don't even know what to call it, like an amoeba. Yeah, yeah, they're like these little parasite oh. things that kind of glow and reflect in, this, in the water. But yeah. as soon as you touch them, you're yeah, and it's got beatniks and curvy women. And, <laughs> yeah, and, and of course, lurid, a lurid, Nazi. Like, yeah, a Nazi. Martin Koslek as a yeah. Nazi. A great and, Nazi, uh, by the way. Yeah. yeah. Uh, no, that's a really good. It's very, it's like, yeah, it's so lurid. It's just <laughs> like, it's pretty gory, too. For, it's uh, very, for and, and uh, well, I was reading on the internet that it's considered one of the first or the first gore film. Wow. Ooh, okay. Oh, wow. Interesting. I'll, I'll let the people decide if that's true. <laughs> All right. All right. <laughs> All right. Well, there you go. Those are wonderful, nice. man. You know, does, you. does this does this bring you back to childhood too? Thinking about <laughs> the flesh you know, eaters, summer. yes. Well, <laughs> don't you yeah. just want to get in your swimsuit and just yes. dive well, in an ocean? Well, a- actually, Mark, really quickly, you know, this yeah. when I was a kid, when when Jaws came out, you know, rubber sharks hit the market. Sure. I mean, who sure. didn't have a rubber shark, right? right. right. And I didn't you didn't one. have one. Nah. I did. <laughs> okay. Well, I had I had several. Okay, and what was so great, Mark? What we did is we would play Jaws, and we had a giant plastic pool filled with water, and we had one of those Fisher Price boat sets with the adventure people. These were people that looked oh, yeah. a little more realistic. Yeah. And there was a guy that looked like Quint. And what we did is we took the rubber sharks and took a big bottle of ketchup and poured it into the shark and put the shark in the water, and then make it go, ah, and you, and your shark would grab onto the adventure and you'd squeeze shark and out would come all the ketchup and it would make the, the blood go all over the pool. And it got really disgusting and gross because we kept doing it over and over again. But, you know, my parents are, what the hell is in that pool? Oh, it's ketchup. You know? <laughs> so See, I- we, I didn't buy a rubber shark till I was about 13 and I would fill it with raw turkey meat <laughs> and go to the bathroom and just stay there for about five to seven minutes. 
Mark, <laughs> would you believe I still have those rubber sharks? I do. I, yes, I would believe it. Have I you guys it. have you guys seen the new NECA action figures of Jaws from Jaws? <gasps> I, I yes. have the oh, yeah. They are unbelievable. So, so is, amazing. Is the Quint now available? How long it has it been? I think it, it is. I have it. Do you? Oh, oh my gosh. gosh. He's getting it. He's getting it. He's looking they're around. Pretty, they're pretty amazing. Yeah. He's he's searching. He's leaving. For, his for listeners, boy. listeners, as as we all know, James is a huge, huge I'm a huge Jaws fan. Jaws fan. Oh, it's still in the box. Wait, too. It's still in the box. Oh, you're not gonna you're not gonna, you're not gonna open it up right now, are you, James? I'm gonna destroy the box, actually. Wow. Right in front of you. That is just I mean, no, that is that's beautiful. I do you want that. Yeah. So beautiful. I, 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 but but I, I, the, the right side, they pull back on. There's some sort of uh, licensing issue. Really? No. Oh, there is not, as, as of now, there will not be a Brody. Really? Yeah. Oh, so, yeah. Are they, are they going to do it? The estate came in. And- Hopefully, drive us to come later. I don't know what happened with with. Uh, so then that's Schreider, then so. that means that the whole marathon yeah. man series is done. <laughs> I know. That's really. right. <laughs> the, yeah. the Bob Fosse, the, bl- the blue oh, thunder Bob action. Fosse. Yeah, the blue thunder action figure set is done. Damn. No All right. Okay. I, you know, I'm, right. I'm waiting though. I'm and waiting forget- for the Lou, I'm waiting for the Lou Gossett Jr. Jaws 3D figure. That's yeah, the one. Yes. I want. You know what? I've Gossett got all the other figure. all that jazz figures, <laughs> and now I'm missing Fosse. <laughs> And forget uh, 2010. Which, by the way, I know forget it's going to start I, I love all that jazz. Oh, well, Mark, Mark, <laughs> I I, Mark, I just I want to thank you so much for being with us on the show. Does that mean we're done? Yeah, well, I know for a summer vacation. I just want to say, is there anything you're working on? Is there something well, you're first doing? First of all, I want to say, I'm happy I made it through the entire episode without Larry referring to me as sir. <laughs> Larry, it's not too late. Piss him off, but it's also he, there's there's sir is almost like aloha because it has right. so Larry, many yeah, meanings, sir. you know. So so it's like if he gives you the sir, you know, then you know you're in trouble. Gotcha, gotcha. Um, well, there's uh, the Succotash show, right? The uh, mm-hmm. the the comedy soundcast soundcast, which I will be featuring a clip from uh, this show on. Oh, nice. yes, absolutely. Actually, I'll probably I'll probably feature a better clip than the one I'm on, but uh, <laughs> there will be a clip on there. Uh, that's uh, available weekly. I am the officially the co-host. I switch off every week with my co-host. Okay. The only way we can think of to do a weekly show is oh, he yeah. does one. I do one. Good so, idea. Uh, I, Tyson Sainter does one. I do one. You can see my uh, weekly cartoons uh, I do for the Half Moon Bay Review. I do an editorial cartoon every week. I've been doing it for oh, three years. And right. just this last year, I was awarded first and second place by the newspaper publishers of California for weekly newspapers across the entire state. Oh, oh Mark, wow. congratulations. congratulations. That's well awesome. Done, my friend. So that was cool. And, uh, you know, I've talked about my Hallmark movies with you guys before. Oh, yeah, yeah. Talk about them uh, again. The Well, no, I'm going to tell you, the the guy that was my executive producer on those movies called me uh, just a couple of months ago. And there were a few I sold to the production company that never got made. Mm-hmm. And this guy now has a production deal with Netflix. And he said, hey, do you remember those movies we bought? I said, yeah. He says, those rights should have gone back to you. Can we take a look at those and maybe we will buy them for Netflix. Hey! Oh, nice. nice. Try and stop me. Absolutely. <laughs> That's right. So we'll see if those movies actually see the light That's of cool. day. And I will, of course, tell you guys about those. Yeah. Movies. And, and check do. out Mark's films because they yes. are a lot of fun. Santa Jr. Santa Monster, Monster Makers. Mark. Yep. All right. And, uh, um, uh, what's uh, the uh, what's the last one? I you can't remember it. <laughs> I can't even remember. Uh, it's uh, it was the Valentine days. one, right? Wedding, or wedding days, wedding days. But one of the ones that uh, is in contention now for possibly is um, basically a a ghost movie called No Such Thing. Ooh, nice. I like so that. I'm hoping that actually gets. Uh, it's about a a ghost that hires a ghost hunter to get rid of another ghost. <laughs> 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 I love it. Cool. Well, you are a joy. This has been a vacation. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah. This is like a slaycation. This is the perfect getaway. Yeah. <laughs> uh, right. Yes. Well, thank you for being part of the Monster Party Summer Slaycation. Oh, it's always right. a pleasure, gentlemen. Great to see you. Thank yeah. You. Uh, we lift you. our thank glasses you, and toast. Yes. Yeah. Let's lift our girl drinks and toast to. Yeah. 
Mark Hershon. Thank you, gentlemen. Time for a listener shout out. Shout out. Shout out. A hot shout out. Hot, <laughs> hot summer shout out. out. <laughs> Gentlemen, Hot, we have a shout out. We have a new a new review. <gasps> a oh. new review? What? New a review. summer review? <laughs> yeah. Is it a new zoo review? Coming right at you. <laughs> 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 this comes from Mick1229. All right. Who, we, Sounds we like have, an Android. <laughs> <laughs> we, I love we that have, model. We've we have heard from him before. I don't remember exactly where I went, but okay. here you go. <laughs> Excellence personified. <laughs> now, That's my now middle when, name. <laughs> That's right. When, the, when you saw a review like that, how can you go wrong, right? No. Uh-uh. What can I say? This podcast makes Citizen Kane look like Joni loves Chachi. <laughs> makes the Godfather look like the Godfather 3. <laughs> Some quick topic requests. To okay. be ignored, to be ignored, mm. Tihi. Mm-hmm. Aurora Monster Models. Oh. Sure. Well, we could do we could do models all in models. general. Yes. Yeah. It's not bad, actually. Yeah. Rebel and model kits. I yeah. could go on for hours. Monstrous model kits. Yeah, I like or it. What if Universal and Hammer did one crossover film in amazing Technicolor? Mm. That's mm-hmm. interesting. I guess That's the closest thing to that would have been the remake of the old Dark House. True. Oh, in a way. True. Well, yeah. and I mean, Tales Universal. of Frankenstein. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. But that but was the real old, life. But the old dark out. house. Yeah. 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 Right. But the old dark house that we did the commentary for. That's right. That's um, right. Mill Creek. Still yeah. available for purchase. That's, that's right. Hammer mm-hmm. collection mm-hmm. from Hammer Plug, plug no Mill Creek. Plug. Or how about a callback to Saturday morning cartoons? It was the episode that made me fall in love. Oh. We could do a second one of that, maybe. We, what it? Yeah, the that first was one Dana, was Dana Gold, right? Right. Saturday morning. Yeah. 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 I would. I. I think that deserves another look because yeah. it's a big. It's a big topic. Yeah. Because yeah. there are. Yeah, there are a lot yeah. of ones that. Because um, you know we just had Ultraman Day. Right. And right. because I was thinking about Ultraman, I was thinking about Channel Twenty, where I'd watch Ultraman, and Channel Twenty had a lot of shows that. I don't know if we talked about the last time. Like, I just started watching Marine Boy. Oh, yeah, yeah. I which I have such Marine a vague Boy. memory of. Right. But uh, yeah, it's fun. It's great, and yeah, uh, yeah. yeah, a lot of that kind of stuff would be fun to talk about. Yeah, oxygen gum, oxygen or, gum. Right? For who would win, a uh, Son of Kong versus Mighty Joe Young? Mm-hmm. All right. Yeah. Yeah, that's nice. yeah, that's, that's a good one because they're. Well, it's about the same not similar, gigantic. Yes. They're not, yeah. and they're yes. similar temperaments. Yes, like they're yeah, not. Right. They're not. Yeah, bad. They're I'd almost. Right. I'd almost be upset to see them fight. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they'd have to. They'd have to team up at the end. You know, like yeah. your classic right. Marvel fight, comic they, thing. They have to team up to fight Conga. <laughs> <laughs> All you have to do is just take out Michael Goff, and <laughs> yeah. you're there. Or uh, the Wolfman versus the creature. Who? Etc. 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 And okay. more Dana Gould. The man's a <laughs> well, national treasure. Well, you're we'll get, no there. disagreement from me. Yeah, we should have money in. Yeah, well, no, we, we will very soon. Yeah, hey, yeah. take take a number, buddy. Come on. <laughs> wow. <laughs> finally, <laughs> finally, Kong boys, Kong. My offer still stands. Food and drinks on me if I can just witness it. <laughs> All right. Well, we're it, yeah, we're working on it. That, we're working that is it. To do definitely that in the queue. Yeah, yeah. I he says I can imagine being terribly outwitted by Matt, being <laughs> called a fool or sir by Larry. <laughs> <laughs> fool? Being, Have you ever used fool? I, I haven't used fool. Maybe you I should interpret that. Maybe my <laughs> he meant clown. Clown. Yeah. No, clown no, no, no. Sir. I you fool. <laughs> you'd have to say it with an English you accent. <laughs> you yeah. fool. You fool. Or being schooled on everything and anything by Sean. Well, <laughs> you know, we live in his nice. dust. <laughs> and of course, talking some deep Star Trek with James. Yeah. <laughs> what doesn't he know? Nice. nice. Keep up the excellence, lads. And thanks for helping us through the pandemic. Oh, uh, you're what welcome. A, Very nice. Beautiful Mick, review. 
Mick1229, thank you so much. We, we're sure you're not an Android now. And we <laughs> yeah. do appreciate the review. Yeah, and, I'll uh, say. Yes, that's wonderful. That made my we day. Really appreciate yeah. yeah, I know. Yeah. Awesome. Am, am, am I just known as the insult guy? Is that my thing? <laughs> Uh, hmm. I wonder why, hmm. sir. Uh, I get, <laughs> insult guy. I get. I get. <laughs> turn over a new leaf, Mister Insult. Am I Larry, just Larry, as, am I just you've, you've turned enough? over every leaf. The, the, the yeah. forest, the There's forest no more is tree. barren. The forest is barren. There are no more. There are dead trees now. It's just a desert. Yeah. You're gonna have to turn over a root. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I'm just known as the not Star Trek. <laughs> <laughs> and interiors and blackfish guy. It's like, well, wait a second. And yeah. and your point is, okay, I'll take it. I'll take it. I'll take it. Okay. Well, thank you, Mick. We really appreciate that. And yeah, that was hey, great. anybody listening, if you take a moment, write a review. We would love to hear your thoughts, especially right. especially if the review starts especially with excellence. If you, if you excellence. gush over us, yes, <laughs> yeah, excellence <laughs> personified. I think we can excellence. guarantee. We will read that on the air. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Boy, that's got to be, I think, our, our motto for the show. Excellence personified. <laughs> yeah. I, I love that. It. That's got to that. that. be on a T-shirt. <laughs> that just made my day. <laughs> well, speaking, speaking of T-shirts, they are still available. That's on right. eBay's oh, yeah. Launches. Are they still available? They're still available. Our glow-in-the-dark classic Monster Party logo T-shirt. They're still even, available. Even, even though it's summer, you can still wear it. Just you know, put on the air conditioning and you know, but they're not going to last hit, for long, though. I, I was beach. surprised we still had some. Yeah, hit the beach in a nice hot black, black t-shirt. t-shirt. Yes, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Maybe you could tassel the arms, you know, yeah. or yeah, See, Maybe. customize it. Customize you guys yeah. laugh, but people look cool in a black t-shirt. That's man. true. That's yeah. true. And yeah. maybe you could cut out the waist. You probably did that, right, yeah. Larry? Yeah. Where you yeah. cut out the waist of the t-shirt? Yeah. No, got I, I on don't. the treadmill. Uh, and, oh, and and show the the Pillsbury Doughboy flab. No, I'm no, talking I about don't. in the day, in the before time. <laughs> No, we, we, Larry, 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 we all had a better ex- physique. At a, personified. You know? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Just keep saying. Just keep that saying that to yourself. I, now, James, is there something else you want to say? What well, we also still have Monster Party cloth PPE masks available. Yes. Right. Yeah. In store as well. Where those yeah. at the beach? <laughs> yeah. Exactly. You know, there's a lot of use. You know, even though now you know masks are not absolutely necessary in a lot of situations. Required. They're not yeah. required, but there are still benefits to wearing a mask. It's like, still smart sometimes to wear one. Yeah, yeah and you got it, these it, new strains know. that are coming, and they're yeah. the Andromeda yeah. strains next. So <laughs> get ready. Yes. <laughs> do you want to be turned to powder? Yeah. I do Let's not. Put on a mask. Yeah. There's a lot of benefits to wearing these masks. I'm telling you, if you're under surveillance, they can't read your lips. <laughs> you wear them over your face, the entire face. Yes. <laughs> you don't have to shave. You oh, don't have to. Oh, you yeah. don't have to. You don't have to trim your nose hair. No, yeah, you're never growing, grow it long <laughs> and luscious. Yeah. Uh, nobody's going to smell the bourbon on your breath at 11 in the morning. Oh, oh thank God. God. You're right These inside masks. my head. <laughs> These are multifunctional. Yeah. And they are limited in supply, and they're going to go up it, it, it's to the hundreds on eBay. So, you know, buy them now. Shipping is still free. You're okay. kidding. Wait. It's not, uh, the summer, it's not the summer heat driving you crazy. It's true. It's yeah, I thought I just free. had some uh, yeah. heat delirium. But yeah. no, I think I heard you correctly. It's free. That's awesome. still free. And if you're a Patreon member, oh. you will get bonus goodies with your eBay purchase. Oh, yeah. yeah. Like extra video and audio and book downloads and special Larry's shows. Toy time. Yes, yeah. Larry's and, and, Toy Time. Yes, and and Patreon offers so much for a very very affordable monthly price. What would right. that be? That would be five dollars a yeah. month. You're you can buy a dollars. beach ball for five bucks. <laughs> yeah, that's you're, right. You're right, yeah. Sean. In yeah. this day and age, you you, you can't even buy a sand price. artichoke. Nothing is five dollars anymore. Nothing. That's right. It used to be like nothing was five cents anymore. Now nothing is five dollars anymore. Five dollars. I don't know. I don't know what we're doing anymore. I don't even know who I am. <laughs> Five dollars, and it came to this five dollars. Really? But you know what? Really, we're happy because we're passing the savings on to you, yeah, and we're giving the monster love to the community. And you're giving it back to us by helping us support yeah, this show. Absolutely. 
Yes, so we're, thank survi- you. we're surviving on those five dollars. Uh, yes, <laughs> yeah. believe me. You don't understand, but we all live in one room. <laughs> And it's not and even really a room. It's like a shack. It's a shack. You know those tough beach. sheds? Yeah. It's a shed. And we used to we used to be able to buy top ramen. Now we can't even get top ramen anymore. We should no. get regular, regular Yeah, ramen. the regular run-of-the-mill ramen. Right. Run of the mill. Five dollars. Chico's but, but, ramen. But look, you, you, you let's just you get the idea here. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think they do. I think we need I to, think- to talk more. I think they do. So it's a great deal. Patreon, $5. I think you're deal. wrong, you fool. <laughs> Sir. And hey, listen, let's remind everybody. Let's just remind everybody that you can find us on Facebook and on YouTube at Monster Party TV, where everything Dude, is free. Yeah, man, free. it's free. Come on. It's free. Come on, man. And on, just and on do, Twitter, it. do it. Twitter, where, where do our it. handle is at Monster Party HQ on Twitter and Monster Party HQ on Instagram. So social media, it's the way of the future. It doesn't matter what the <laughs> It's really catching is. on. It's what the kids yeah, are I, mean, I, I hear the social media has been pretty popular. Oh. It's, it's <laughs> happening. It's hip. It's cool. I, <laughs> the, I know the a people, couple the other people. people. The people of today are loving it. The people of today are really loving it. Yes. The yeah. Kids. You gotta yeah. The kids, are, the kids are into it. <laughs> First Windows, then this. Oh, the world. First my spam- MySpace is back. I mean, oh, come on. oh, man. Yeah. Not since Friendster <laughs> has something become so popular. Friend face is really popular. Uh, friend now, remember face. Friend face. <laughs> friend face from uh, IT, IT crowd. crowd yes. Oh my god, that's so good. That's All so right. funny. All well, right, this is this has been great. This has been fun, and thank you for your patience, Larry. <laughs> <laughs> On that note, I am Matt Weinhold. I'm Sean Sheridan. I'm Larry Strofe. and I'm James Gonis. Keep America strong. And have yourself a bitchin' summer slaycation. I'm gonna need a bigger podcast. Oh, keep, keep going. going, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. Keep going. Good. holy fuck. <laughs> what's the best, what's the best advice you can give if you want to work out in Palm Springs and they said, well, do your workout before 9 a.m. And then after that, don't do anything else. Just just rest, stay at home, st- well, don't, about, do, don't do yeah. any activity. It's all about the AC. You know, nobody does anything outside uh, this time of year. Yeah, it's you like, scoff, yeah. you scoff. You go, <laughs> if you see someone outside through your window, you go, what the hell are they doing? <laughs> and then they just drop dead. Well, it's like if you live in, you know, in, in a frigid climate, it's the same thing. You don't go out when it's a blizzard. You look out people who are doing that. And it's like, oh, they're idiots. You know, good point. Yeah, I'm Very amazed that we need to explain weather to you. Is this a new thing? <laughs> yeah, it's a yeah. new thing. Hey, yeah, it's a new thing. You know, oh, oh, gravity. So you're, you want to so do that? So, no, no, no. So, you, so you're so wise about all the worlds of weather. Well, you, I you, understand you, you how it's cold. The weather channel. You watch the Weather Channel every chance you get. You go, oh, oh do I? Look, do I? Look yeah, what that's me. The Arctic. Oh, yeah. compare that oh, to what it's man. like in the Bahamas. I just take the pants off, turn on the Weather Channel, and let the cool breeze flow. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I'm just I'm just saying Palm Springs. It's see, hot. It, apparently. It's hot. And is that and, true, James? There was a record at 120 the other day. Hey, how about that? Wow. So what I hear is it hot enough for you? (laughs) (laughs) See, because I know know, James likes to heat. After 115, it's all the same. Uh, You know, if I'm eating, I'm eating like these cage free organic eggs these days. So they're a little expensive. But but if I was eating cheap eggs, like from the dollar store, I would literally take one out and crack it over the sidewalk just to see (laughs) if the egg would fry. Hey, which eggs are you getting? Because I do actually, in all seriousness, 
I love these eggs that are they're like heritage. And they're the ones that look like when you cook them or you crack them open, they're like Japanese eggs. They're the really yeah, orange yolk. Very orange, right. And they, yeah. don't smell, they don't smell like sulfur so much. Oh, my God. Mark Kershaw's here. Japanese eggs. Yeah, like, you know, when you go to Japan, hold on, let me uh, get wait, Mark, Mark into this. Wait, whoa, whoa, what's Mark Hershon doing here? Mark's got his <laughs> his phony oh, work background. He's at background. the office. <laughs> he's at the office. <laughs> Where are you? Are you, are you, are you oh at the God. Pentagon? I'm working hard, working hard. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Mark. I, I wonder what the real background is. It's just a <laughs> bunch of peep shows. and. <laughs> <laughs> you don't need Excuse that. me, sir. How much is a copy of Jugs United? <laughs> and that's a, that's a farm milk producing magazine, correct? <laughs> no, that would be porn, Larry. Okay, all right, okay. Hard Mark, porn, really right, hard Mark, porn. Okay, Mark. I mean, hat. hard okay. porn. Thank you. The hat, the t-shirt. I got the whole. Oh yeah, look at that. Oh, and here like comes it. here comes Sean Sheridan. Hey, how's okay. the weather there, Sean? <laughs> <laughs> it's good. We've been talking about weather. What is it like yeah. in, in 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 that way off land of Westchester? It's nice, actually. No, it's it's a uh, very pleasant, nice summer uh, evening. He's actually closer to the beach. You know the yeah. beach, Matt. You know with a cool. I'm not air familiar. You know? <laughs> so, uh, Mark, are you in San Francisco? I so now he is. is. Wow, I was fast. <laughs> <laughs> what are the transporter? Are you I, in the holodeck? I can be pretty much anywhere I need to be. <laughs> hey, 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 Mark, explain something to me in the because you're the podcast guru here. Sure, um, try, sure. So if we like if you wanted to say a little something about a show that we've done, like, gosh, you could check out Monster Party because they have. You know, Mark Rails back on uh, uh, Steve Mark Rails back. Rails back. back. <laughs> Will you shut up? Steve Rails back on the show. Then you could go, oh, you know, type that in or something like sure. that because sure. a lot of people. So, yeah. Well, I'm should, I'm I'm planning to to feature your Steve Rails back episode in my next episode of Suck Dash. Oh. The, when I was when I tweeted to you guys, I was I was saying you should let me know in advance. Because you know, I do the uh, the review yeah. for this yeah. week in comedy podcast, but it has to be this week. Oh, um, so so who dropped the ball here? Hmm. I guess that was you. <laughs> you were you were wrangling. I, I, you were you were coordinating. I didn't know. I didn't know, I didn't know you, that. I'm a, oh, God, I gotta get to Mark Hirsch on first. Oh, we gotta leave. No, you have no I, way to contact him. Say, you have no, no, I don't know. What you think? I've got his phone number here on my phone. I can There's call a, him up again. Yeah, hey, shit. It well, rhymes I, with pace. You look. Don't have it. <laughs> Mark, wow. just, well, yeah, you, well, you, nice you, going, Stroud. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wait, wait, okay. Wait, wait, hey, wait. bring this ship down. Yes, my middle name is Failure. Haven't you figured that out? <laughs> hey, yours too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, Mark, you, you have, do you have our, um, fucking Christ? <laughs> <laughs> hey, Mark, Mark. Thanks for being here. Thanks for being here. Thanks for being here. I see you looking up all the time. Does that mean I have a big screen here above oh. my smaller screen here? Oh, gotcha. Uh, okay. So I, uh, I, uh, I want to so be I, on the big. I screen. thought maybe you were seeing angels or something. Well, that too. <laughs> I'm looking at I'm looking at four angels right now. How are you? Uh, oh. Nerd angel. See, I can't he's, stay mad at you. See, he's so great. He's he such is. a great guest. You know, I, oh, I come to the show, I'm all I'm already hot and bothered. I'm upset and <laughs> Mark makes me feel better. Are you in Palm Springs? Because I hear it's, well, it is I hear it's very warm there. Yes, mm. yes. Very how hot, James? It is 50 billion degrees. I'm not See, exactly. it's not 50 okay. billion. It's like 100, it's, what, 117, 118, something like that. like that. Yeah, I mean, it might as well be 50 billion. It's hot. It's just hot. You do that thing where you open the door and you just go, ah! <laughs> it's just bursting Literally, the you flames. Open, you open the door, it feels like you opened up the oven. Yes. Wow. Yes. Wow. Yes. Do you know, Mark, really quickly, I, I used to was I was a waiter at a restaurant for years and years and years. And they had this special hot air convection oven that they had all the baked potatoes. And if they open the door, mm. the hot air would go, ah, it would come out. I swear to God, that's what it's like in Palm Springs right now. I feel like I'm like baking in a baked potato Convection right. oven. Stop you, saying baked potato. <laughs> now you, you guys. God, I want a baked potato. In a similar story, 
Larry, a baked you potato story? Have, you sort of. You guys have all been to Japan, yeah? Yes, yes, sir. Yes. yes. We were just yes. talking about Japanese eggs before you came on here. Oh. Oh, well, I was there doing a project for um, uh, Suntory whiskey. Oh, yeah. I, oh. I, got, I got to tour several Suntory distilleries while I was wow. there. And they said, because, you know, it's very unusual. We have people actually working for our brand. We want to take you into our special kiln room. Oh, well, well, wait a minute. So what? <laughs> the kiln room where they actually. Kiln, they, kiln. kiln. Not kill room. Yeah. Kiln room. <laughs> it's just like, is there, is there a Japanese Dexter? <laughs> yeah. But it's it's where they, they heat up all the uh, the hops and stuff that they right. use to make. Right. Pasta, right? Mm -hmm. And so they, they have these big glass doors that go. Uh, so people normally are not allowed in here. And they open these doors in like. 1400 degrees just wafts out mm, wow. just, they go, oh please go inside I go i don't want to go in there <laughs> and they kind of push me in and they take me in and when you get done there's a, a girl uh, uh, with a basket full of cold towels wow. <laughs> because wow. it's so hot it's unbelievable wow. so i share wow. your pain larry i should should matt a girl with cold towels how does that sound shouldn't every porno house have someone like that see why do you bring why do you bring that up you, you why do i bring porn you you up? bring our our show to a low level you could be it could be a refreshing okay. thing a yeah. refreshing well it, i'm saying just, it's that too are you gentlemen <laughs> drinking as usual as oh, yeah. usual, of course. Yes. I just wanted to toast you before we uh, get started. Oh, hey. I'm, I'm having a California pizzazz. Yeah, nice. <laughs> stuff. So we should get going then, since uh, we're all here. That's it going. And Sean, yeah, he has answer, a job. Hey, Sean, you know, answer, I have a job too. Hello. This is, Sean, to answer your question, I was looking up, although I just found out yesterday what the theme was, I have a lot of notes. So <laughs> yeah, it was we're, good, we're up on the other screen. I always yeah, come I, prepared. I try yeah. to come prepared. Cool. You yeah. know, Mark, well, we're going to be a little loose tonight, you know, cool. it's fast and loose. Yeah, we're not going to be, well, it's like, cause I'm Mr. Stickler of everyone gets a, you know, we're going to be a little loose tonight. Cause yeah, right. it's like summer, Con summer vacation conversational. Yes. We're at the, we're at a virtual <laughs> beach. Nice. We're just yeah. having some cocktails and just shooting the shit as nice. the kids well, say. My middle yeah. name is Loose. <laughs> <laughs> really? Yeah, Nothing really. has changed. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the stories you could tell, Mark Hershon. Mm -hmm. I'd, I'd love to hear some of those stories. Me, one I don't day. think you're ready for them. <laughs> Oh, well, I got to put on my porn hat. Is that what I need to do? <laughs> no, your porn, your porn, your porn shoes. Larry, I'm happy to hear that you have a porn hat. <laughs> Wait, uh, no, I don't have a porn hat. You said my porn hat. Well, I, uh, that's, oh, you know, I'm, so I'm, you're a liar. Uh, no. You're a yes. porn liar. Yes, yes. I'm a liar, Matt, and a failure. Okay, so yeah, anything else Good you want to talk about? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. La Larry's failures. <laughs> Oh, man, hold on. We can, get we a, go, I'm we, calling up that list. Hold on. We, can, <laughs> we, we can go on and on okay. for hours. <laughs> All right. So no, what, we have to start this. Because yes. Mark's not doesn't want to be a part of that show. So, Mark, you know what the topic is, right? I do. You know, winter, you know it's, winter horror films. No, <laughs> no, no. <laughs> um, be, that'll be another one we can do later. Research. Yeah. And Mark, you remember how this ha happens? Mar uh, Matt's going to use his creepy voice to oh. kind of introduce the show. We introduce ourselves. Wait a minute. We what? say what the topic is. Yep. And then we say who our guest is. Oh, Larry, so. I've, done, I've done this dance, man. I love it. Yes. I, love it. I'm ready. I'm ready. I know. But, but, you know, Mark, I, I treat every guest as, you know, it's a unique, special experience. I, you know, I like it's new and fresh. Maybe you've been away from it a while and you go, oh, yeah, that's how it's done. Yeah. Thank you. You know, you, know I see you have this talent of <laughs> subtly insulting someone, yet it's a compliment. Like, I don't, I, I you know, it's an amazing talent. It's, it's both backhanded and forehanded. <laughs> no, yes, no. Sidehanded. No, see, I didn't say little show or little, you know, so that's I didn't. Coming. No, no. I, you know, Mark, I learned yeah, that I, little, I, that little stuck attached thing you I, do, I, you know, see, I, people I, listen to every once in a while. We had a know. guest on who I love, Ken Daly, and I said something about, you know, a little commercial or something. And Ken goes, why does he demean so much? And I, so I'm, I'm trying to get away from saying, oh, it's a little thing, you know, that's I, a good start. Yeah. The fact start you know somewhere. What? You're aware of it. And that's the important thing. That's yeah. half the battle, isn't it? Yes. 
All right. Well, we'll start this. G.I. Joe would say. Is, knowing is he said that? Oh, knowing wait. is half the battle. Isn't that really? G.I. Joe? The G.I. Joe, the, Kung Fu grip? The, sur- the service, the public service no. announcements, a little interstitial. Cartoon ones, right? Joe. Yeah. Doesn't he um, say, and knowing is half the battle. Isn't that, wasn't that? What I like is how the pre-show pattern is exactly the same as the show pattern. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I think was it's that better. Wait, was that about drugs, Sean? Was it, it was like various a, a, things. It's like, don't do drugs. Don't swim by yourself. Don't, you know, it was always, remember? Do you guys not know this? Well, I don't think I, I was, I wasn't Public watching. service announcements from no. an animated G.I. Joe cartoon. No, I remember, I remember the Batman and Robin one. Yeah, the Super remember. Friends did it too, but so did G.I. Joe. Look well, up. I don't remember G.I. Joe because okay. that was war related and we weren't allowed no, to watch like war. Related. It was, well, this is the 80s. It was, it was they fighting Cobra. Don't you remember any of this? I, I look to me sh- just really quickly, really quickly. GI Joe went from twelve-inch figure to little figure. Yeah, and so when it did that, I didn't watch the animated right, I'm cartoon. Not talking, I'm just talking about the, the car show, not the toys. You're right, the toys for but, us, for no, the rest of toys. Sean, this morning right. because Sean, were, yes, right. but the toys were the the TV show. Yeah, so right. I didn't want to watch the the toys uh, TV okay. show that I did give, not like. You don't like you don't, you don't want to support the toy line that you didn't like. I well, only the, I only have the one bottle of liquor here, guys. So sorry. <laughs> let's do it. Let's get it. All right, Wait, all right. Now, the, the title of the show. Yeah. What would you say? Oh, yeah, oh, say yeah. Sorry. With? We're going to need a, another 20 minutes to figure no, this out. Oh, Mark, it's really quick because James made a nice suggestion, but Sean, like, but nudged his in there. Matt had a couple good ideas. I no, think I had a good one. The summer. It has summer. Monster Party Summer Scarathon or something? No, it wasn't Scarathon. Scare state slay slaycation or something? No, yeah. Monster Party Summer Slaycation. Summer Party Slaycation? No, just no. Summer Slaycation. M- Monster summer Parties. Vac- you know how like it's uh, it's summer National vacation. Lampoons. Yeah, do it. Summer Vacation. That's good. Let's yeah. do it. Monster oh, Party okay. Summer Slaycation. Okay. There Is you that Slay Dash Cation? Yeah. <laughs> yes, it's perfect. James, is that okay with you? Let me run that by legal brand. first, and <laughs> right. I'll get back Claymation? to you. Claymation? No. Summer I just Claymation. Claymation. From, yes. a, from a branding standpoint, it's perfect. Yep. So, yeah. All right, that's from the pro. Yeah, from the pro. From the pro. All right, oh, wait, well, let's wait, do it. Wait, then. wait, one moment. One moment. Oh shit! <laughs> let's all ditch him. <laughs> <laughs> What's he doing? What did you do? I'm what sorry. did you do? I a man of mystery. I put the towel underneath the door. So the, the, the cold, cold one. Towel? <laughs> <laughs> yes, the cold towel oh. under the door. How Japanese of you. Okay. <clears throat> All right. Why are you putting a towel? Oh, oh, okay. For sound so, purposes. So the blob doesn't come in. Both, both reasons. I, I thought it was a little. You know, he's a yeah. He's, he's jumped the fence on the actually, cannabis actually, Sean, side. If the blob is going to come through, I'm going to invite it in. Okay. okay. Mark will leave if we don't start this. So All right. Let's go. All right, here we go. I got, Mark, I thanks go. for being with us. It's my yes, yeah, thank, thank you, Mark. Thank, thank you. Thank you for inviting me. I love it. Always. It's always a pleasure. We are oh. deeply in love with you. And you know, Mark, at the end of the show, you know, Matt will say something like, Hey, is there anything you want to plug? Oh, and God. just plug your show. And okay. we want everyone to hear about your show. Fantastic. And Mark, Mark, and you. just make sure make sure you talk into the mic while we're doing this. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> Space <laughs> toward <laughs> the mic. <laughs> Okay, can you here guys we go. hear me okay, by the way? I, we can, yes. Good, good. Cool. All right, here we go. Summer Slaycation! <laughs> yeah! It's summer! Yeah. Hey, too, I just have too, a question. It too seems much. a little loud on my yeah, end. You're, yeah, you're, you're blowing out a bit, Larry. Can I do Summer Slaycation one more time? Please, please. <clears throat> uh, here we go. Here and, we go. Uh, let me do, and so maybe just, uh, yeah. Maybe, yeah, just adjust your mic a little bit. Hold on. Wait, Mark, wait, wait. I'm sorry. I'm just excited. No worries. I'm just as excited as you are, Larry, about something different. That. I don't I don't believe you. But, okay, here we go. In your own time. Oh, you want me to do it? Yeah, yeah you, you just, said you wanted to do it again. Yes, I did. Okay. I did. Ready? Summer Slaycation. Say the whole thing. Summer Slaycation. Monster Last parties. time, didn't, uh, you monster said monster parties. parties. Oh, like, you said oh. the whole thing. Okay, let me just write it down. Okay. <laughs> Normally, we don't have this much trouble, Mark. We're just a little nervous. Okay, uh, okay I'm ready. Ready? Yes. Um, the cast is also amazing. The kids are played by um, – hold on here. Wait, hold on. Kevin Costner. <laughs> it wasn't Kevin yeah. Costner. Could have been. Jerry Mathers. No. Ryan Reynolds. 
No. Leave it to other. <laughs> uh, okay, yeah, so oh, okay. God, I don't know how to pronounce your name. Kind of yeah, do it clean. Yeah, okay. The cast is amazing. The uh, two twins are played by Chris Udvan Kark. I don't know how to pronounce his name. <laughs> Come on, do it. Udvan Ark. Udvan Okay. Do it again. The, the kids are played, the, the twins are played by Chris Udvanarki. Udvarnar. I can't say it. It's tough. <laughs> Hold it. It's tough. Ud- they didn't have much Ud- career Ud- after this. Ud- you know? Ud- <laughs> All right. Ud- Sound it out. Ud- Send Ud- your German. And what, what's weird is what the lady was, um, she's Miss, what, Miss Nestle Coffee or no, Nestle? No, no, oh, Folgers Crystals. Right? Folgers Crystals. Right. Yeah. And she was so friendly in the commercial. And then when you see her in the film, it's like. Are you, you know, talking you know, about? I, think, I don't think. No, it's Hills Brothers. It's the richest kind. Yeah. I is think that you're, you're mixing the person up here but you know what i'm talking about right yes but it's not the same person no you're talking um hold on hold on oh my god we're talking of uda hagen uda hagen right who is not the folgers coffee person was it no no hold on one second my internet's (laughs) slow just hold on god damn it uda hagen was like was like a stanislavskian acting coach he had a big reputation acting coach in virginia christine yeah virginia christine is that she was the she was the Folgers, oh. Folgers coffee crystal. Lady. Well, yeah. the thing that I like about our show is I stand corrected. We got to the bottom of it. <laughs> no, I'm no not afraid to any admit, of this. I'm yeah, not afraid to. Admit we're that so I'm informative. Yeah, yeah. Virginia <laughs> Christine was an actress. She was in a lot of Universal horror films. But yeah, all right. Not- now let's get back on track here. Hey, I mean, I don't call you Matthew. I call you Matt. <laughs> yeah, you know. So yeah, Matthew's like my mom calling me. I mean, Matthew, yeah. Matthew, Matthew, William, <laughs> you know, my, you know, when I would play in the neighborhood that we lived in, my dad, I'd be out and, you know, wherever. And my dad would lean his head out the window and go, Matthew, <laughs> over wow. and over again wow. until I came home. Wow. So that's my, How could geez. that possibly be embarrassing? I, my dad did something similar. So really, I, I used to I used to think my dad. I mean, this is so fucked up, man. I, I remember thinking, oh, why is it? Why is why is my dad not an opera singer? Because when he'd answer my mom, he'd go, "Yes, Jay." <laughs> and I mean, it's funny when you talk about it. Wasn't funny at it wasn't the time. Funny then, no. right, right. It, the, the frustration and the anger that my dad had. It, <laughs> it was just, but it was like, and, but he was a cauldron of. Thanks. Yes. Yes. And then, you know, we used to joke about this when my dad wanted us because there's seven of us. He'd, right. he'd lose track. He'd go, Steve, Chris, Paul, Larry, you know, he'd have to go through us. And, yeah. And then it kind of make you, he, you know, but, well, right. you know, we got two biblical names. We got Matt and then my brother, Mark. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You know, that they'd always get confused. So yeah, I was right. always my Mark. <laughs> or, or <Matt>. right. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah, but yeah uh, I say, thank god i only have one kid you know well, <laughs> like, well, well right. you know it's funny with carrie too carrie does this thing and she doesn't even mean to do anything by it, but it's just funny like she'll come in the room and i'll be you know doing whatever or my attention will be on something else and she'll go right behind me and she'll go matthew and i'll like <laughs> <laughs> and she says this is because of my brother because my brother used to do all this shit like he would fuck with me as larry and i we've you know yes. created stories here yes. but you know they they hardwire you into a kind of yeah, yeah, behavior sure. yeah they sure and do. So my brother would do this thing where he'd wake me up and i go uh. so now whenever harry tries to wake me up i'm always like ah! really? yeah, <laughs> wow. what is wrong with you? Sure. i can't i don't i i, I wish yeah. i could Stop they don't, it, un- but I can't. They don't understand. Right. It's hard for someone they like understand. they don't understand. They don't. They don't yeah, understand. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I've, I've been there, man. I've been there. 